Yo, Perry Shorvin, some retrogrades. It is Friday morning, meaning it's that time again for CMAS, Christian masculinism. It's not the red pill. It's not men going their own way, but it's not what you typically hear from Christians about restoring the patriarchy coming from the patriarchy channel itself. Case for patriarchy channel, that that, that would be me. Today, I'm here with CMASK vets, Nick and Will, Will who runs the Patriarchy Project from across the pond, but also with two good friends. Elliot's not here today, but we got AJ Barker and Royce White to help us build out this extra big list uh, from a show a couple couple days ago I did with Steph called Dumper affectionately or or uh, how to vet your girlfriend, but it became everyone was calling it just Dumper because it's a Dumper if list to quote to quote Royce and Steph and I built a list out of 10 important line items most crucial for bulwarking the relationships of young men as they work toward restoring the patriarchy and of course we're talking about relationships so we're not talking about things that you're really necessarily looking for in the first five dates most people become a couple with with five good dates on average. Will, Nick, and I know that from running Return Matchmaking by us. And anyway, so let's get into it. But I just wanted to say, what's up, AJ? What's up, Royce? What's up, Nick? And what's up, Will? Happy Seamask morning. How are you guys doing in that order? Great. Great. Doing, oh, great. doing awesome. Glad to be here as always, Tim. You know that. Yeah, it's an honor. Good to have you guys. Nick and Will, how 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 are you guys? Yeah, Tim, good to be here. Hey, I love all this talk about patriarchy. Someone told me they were going to report me to my bishop for trying to restore the patriarchy recently. So it's a pleasure to be here with other people interested in that. Yeah, because wow. Will, you know this better than anyone, man. Um, both both of us basically being fired from teaching positions at, in my case, a Catholic school. In your case the most prestigious school in all of England for teaching restore the patriarchy. And of course the, the Catholic tradition simplicitaire is the, uh, the wellspring of patriarchy uh, of the three Western religions, neither Judaism nor Islam or patriarchy. Judaism is really sort of the, the wellspring of feminism and Islam is the wellspring of I don't know, the red pill or something, you know, get get lots of girls and take advantage of them. Christianity is the source text for how, how to do a benevolent patriarchy. Christianity is bifurcated patriarchy. You got a clerical version and a lay version. So it's extra weird that that Catholics now are the maybe the number one group, maybe the number one group that witch hunt for patriarchalists like a a will noland or a uh royce white aj barker nick stumphauser tim gordon so what we i think nick what did you say before this show started man you wanted this show yeah. the new source text for for what girlfriends uh who are feminist girlfriends who are afraid their their boyfriends will have seen this episode or something like that <laughs> yeah it's so it's it's somewhat common to have uh you know a girl say on in a, a dating profile or perhaps a, in a tweet of some kind if if you man prospective man say anything that even remotely resembles an andrew tate quote you will be anathema i will cast you out into the into the streets um and i said i want that to be the show that you just did with Steph and then this addendum show that this will be the new Salman Rushdie satanic verses that every woman should be afraid that any man in their life is watching this based any non good woman or any woman that needs uh, Christian training in the patriarchy. And by the way, it's bullshit that they're saying Andrew Tate because he's way too permissive. He's letting his women's work right in his uh coven or whatever of, of women he lets them work he lets them he lets them get away with so much so this list will be better what i'm going to do to start out today's show will be just just jump into a, a quick little one through ten review of the 10 line items from the show that i did with steph 
to to catch people up. Maybe viewers missed the show. I feel like the big views never go out on my favorite shows on my channel on, on rules for retrogrades. And I hate that. But uh, yeah, I think I think a, a fraction of people that normally watch watch me and Steph's list show. So I'm going to catch all y'all up right now. And then we're going to build to that list with each of us will add one line item. And I'll, I'll go first, I guess, just for the sake of simplicity. But um, I'm going to tend to that right now. So list of one through 10 in common crypto feminist girlfriend infractions, even in the Catholic world, Novus Ordo, Trad, whatever, charismatic. I think Catholicism is the most feminist infiltrated place, and it's the, the source of patriarchy. So it's extra ironic. So this is what you do to deal with um, the the woman having upper hand coming into the relationship right after five or six dates that went well. When you start talking really frankly and what you also start doing, number one, is tell her no frequently. No. With no apologies. Just no. We're, no, we're not going to do that. You're not going to do that here. Um, and in saying, and here's why, isn't a bad little chaser. It doesn't uh, attenuate your authority much. If if you're if you know, here's here's no, because this is what authority is about. Everyone loves an authority when he is telling the women and the children yes, or your woman and the children in the home more accurately yes. You you, you should be getting affection for yes. You should continue getting affection after you say no. And so this is what you're checking for: is any elements of uh, bitterness, and in Steph's words, any withdrawal on the part of the woman of attention or affection, attention or affection. There should be none. There should be no withdrawal of attention or affection. So this is number rule rule number one. This is also rule number two because it's so damn important. You <laughs> must tell her no. So rule number one is tell her no frequently, not for the sake of being a jerk. But if if you want to tell her no, and there are plenty of opportunities when guys want to tell their girlfriends no, but don't, then tell her no and mean it. Put your foot down. Don't budge. Uh, Royce was saying something about this before we ran the tape. Just this is this is how you win the country. This is how you win wars. This is how you win in the war on terrorism. Just don't negotiate it. Don't negotiate with terrorists. And if you start saying yes after saying no, you will turn your sweet, lovely, potential bride, you will spoil her, and she will be not a, a beautiful potential wife, but a terrorist yelling Allahu Akbar or something like that. So rules number one and two are tell her no. Rule number three is dump her. The audience was doing this. Dump her if she cares what her mom thinks at all, because this is trouble. And the higher generations in America, in the church, we're nothing but trouble. So it's not like, oh, what about sagacious uh, uh, elderly wisdom? There is none to be had from a, a Gen X parent or a boomer parent. If there's the if there are one in a hundred, one in a thousand parent more like it who actually aren't feminist, then they'll be telling her, oh, it's good you got dumped. It's good. Were you mouthing off? You, you got dumped by the man. He's in charge. Um, so if she cares what her mom thinks at all, dump her. Uh, that's rule number three. No, rule number four is if she cares what her dad thinks too much, not at all, but too much, dump her. That'll be a future conduit for crypto feminism. I guarantee it. Even in like trad Catholicism, it's just caring what the parents think means she's still going to be attempting to vote with her feet and say, oh, well, in my family, we did it this way. Who cares what you did in your family? This is my family. <laughs> this is my family. Right. I'm the I'm the patriarch. Right. Don't electro complex me. I'm not competing with your dad. So she cares what her mom thinks at all. Immediately dump her. She cares. She cares what her dad thinks too much. Dump her. Number five. This is an important one. It's been especially important in our return matchmaking program. Maybe maybe Will or Nick, you could you could lend your voice on this this quick one. I'm trying to run through these, but location where you will raise your family with your wife. Announce it. Bold declarative statements. It's a Nick Stumphauser thing. Bold declarative statements. 
And um, you're not saying where do where does your family live again? And you told me about the Saturday every Saturday night pillow fights you had with your sisters. I want to marry you and make this possible for that to continue. You're like, no, we're going to Sioux Falls. We're going to Sioux Falls. That's well, that's where I'm going with my wife anyway. We're going See if you can make the cut. Yeah, Maybe. Tim, it was so important that we actually added it to our application page. Um, for the women. So the women, they do sort of a, a video interview where they film themselves answering questions. And we've sort of built this list out as we go through more and more of these experiences. And yeah, I think the first question that we have now that they have to answer is why is it important for the woman to move to the man upon marriage? And it's just because we got fed up with multitudes of women saying, yes, of course, I will move to my future husband. Uh, and then we find out that there's 68 qualifications. If it's within one contiguous state, if it's within a three-hour drive, if, 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 right. I really want to be by my family, all these things. We just said, all right, cut the nonsense. Tell me in your words why it is vital that when you get married, you're going to move to wherever the husband is. And it seems like uh, demanding that articulation has already filtered out only the women that are willing to articulate it. And the now the video responses we're getting, they make a whole lot of sense. Oh, because he has a job. Oh, because he's the breadwinner. Because he probably has a home. Because he's the patriarch. We're like, yes, okay, excellent. Thank you. Last yes. answer is best, by the way. Sorry, Will, go ahead. I was going to say, if she won't relocate, she's trying to lead you from day one. Like right. a parent holding a toddler's child saying, we're crossing the road now, honey. You better come with me. She's doing that to you as the man in the relationship, even before marriage. So, no. Yeah, I that's that's that true, Will. And that's actually the real answer and something that, you know, it's it's not necessary that you expect um, like the whole the whole perfect answer from uh, from the women, because if it's a bit unreasonable. But that really is the true answer. It's not the pragmatics. Yeah. Oh, he has a job. Oh, oh, I don't want to rustle the logistics because he has a job and a house. No, it's actually because he's the patriarch. And and he says, this is where we're going and that's where you're going. Um, so maybe maybe eventually we'll get some, some women answering that. Well, because he says, this is where we're going to be. And maybe it's like a 10 second answer instead of a 60 second answer. But. Marry her, marry that girl. If she's like, yeah, because <laughs> this is where he wants to live. That that's amazing. Yeah, sometimes logistics can be scary because even though it's it's a a proper logistical answer, a logistically correct answer to say, I'll go wherever my future husband wants us to go because he's the breadwinner. Yeah, but what if he gets injured on the job and you have to take a job in in um some case? Your job will matter then, but not your career. So the husband should still, because he's the patriarch, he should still be making these decisions. So it's also like it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the more we're talking about this, the more I, I think this is so vital. What happened to the? Uh, oh, I hated the movie, so I don't even remember it. What's the one with uh, Woody Harrelson? And it's kind of psychedelic. It's uh, the they're the the Bonnie and Clyde type dynamic. White men can't jump. No, no, <laughs> no not, that, not nat that natural born killers. Natural born killers. Thank you. What happened to the Mickey and Mallory, Bonnie and Clyde, ride or die dynamic of, hey, why is it important for the wife to move to the husband? Oh, because I want to be wherever he is. Don't tell me because he has a job in a 401k in a particular, because I want to be wherever he is. There, women are trying to be like chess players as opposed to just conveying actual desire. And I, I'm shocked that before the women have met their match, have met the person that we are setting them up with, they aren't ideating about a man so desirable that they would go with him to Uzbekistan if he said, this is where we're going. Yeah. He'd have a, a big, plentiful beard, and he would yell, Allahu Akbar. If it, <laughs> it doesn't he sound lovely? Um, or AJ and Royce, I wanted to give you guys uh, a chance to just ruminate publicly, uh, volubly. It, 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 one one remark on the first half of this list, just so you, because 
AJ, I know you saw the show. Royce, I wasn't sure you saw the show. So r- r- list items one through five. Then I'll, I'll do six through 10. Tell her no. Tell her no. If she cares what her mom thinks at all, if she cares what her dad thinks too much, or the location where they they live. AJ, I love that you yelled out uh, cheers for the, the Woody Allen movie, uh, Psychedelic. White men can't jump. White men can't jump. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think of these first five? I, I, I like them I, a lot. I have to say, I'm I'm a little bit dumbfounded that it would get to that point, right? Like, I feel like I do so much of, just the way I was, I would do so much vetting. You talked about it, Tim. You know, in those first five dates, most people are like, you know, do we get along? Do we? I'm like, I'm watching like a hawk. Like, you know, I just, I, it's funny to me thinking about it. What's, what's her gait like? Like, literally, what does she walk like? I want to know, like... <laughs> physically what she looks like like when she talks i want to know like like i remember saying to people like i you know at one point there's a girl she like put her hand out to like touch my forearm like on like a first date and i was like whoa like what Why? you know and i know there's plenty of people that are fine with that but to me i'm like why are you touching me like why are you touching me like that like what yeah. makes you think you just get to enter into this space like that and and it's always like it strikes me as like you know a little manipulative or something so to me, um, I almost like caution people. It's like if you're having to get this far down the road to see see signs, it's like yeah. I mean, you got to. I'll, I'll say this too. You got to know that the psyop runs deep, it so does. you're gonna have things that you got to push through. You know, right. obviously, like you know, Tim and Tim and Steph were talking about dump them as a sort of mechanism to sure up the potential future of the relationship. Of course, granted, like if they leave, then you say okay, good, see ya. But um, it's worth noting there. I, I would say, uh, you know, Steph says, you know, she, she always, if someone dumped them like that worked for, her. there's a few women that it's not going to work for them because they just different personalities. They're not one who's just going to cling to it. Not saying that um, that's, that's disqualifying them in, in some senses. Uh, I'd probably be a, attracted more to that. So I, I think like with any of this, it's like all these things are, are, are good these are all things that sort of have to fall in place and your whole list one through like they just they have to to get there but initial resistance to that i'm more like what are the what are the red flags and i'll share more of my my one rule when we get to that but that's my initial thought remember setting setting a beautiful little bird free if you love it but it but it shushes you or cares what its birdie mother thinks dumping her doesn't mean that that little birdie cannot return to you a majestic eaglet like you could you you dump partly to we, test yeah yeah what's funny to me is like we talked about you know the the shushing off air which is like if if you shush me we're, it's causing a scene right then yeah. and there yeah yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. what's more going to be interest of interest to me is like how do you respond to the scene that's caused by that because she might feel like oh i'm being kind of cute and like shh, shh, shh. you know because she's just been imbibed in the water that you can kind of playfully do that yeah. And if it's like, whoa, 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 you know, hold on. It flipped from playful to real real quick. And no, there's no shushing going on. Like, that's incredibly rude and disrespectful. Not okay with it. And now everyone in the room has to hear me say that to you. Yeah. And sort of acknowledge. Like, to me, I'm more like, okay, how does this unfold? Because uh, she's going to walk herself out of it if if this was really somewhere she was trying to get at something deeper yeah. of, like, being able to shush and control you. Whereas if they're like, whoa, okay, like, yeah, you're right. And actually, now that I see it, I kind of like, so that's, that's all I'm saying is like, part of, part of the, the vetting phase for me is going to be in the, the play out of yep. the conversation of what commences. Or yeah, the there, dumpage. How, yeah, how does, she, how does she respond to the, to the dumpage? The, it's the, funny. the real S word is, is sorry, not shush. They need to say sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. That's right. It, it, um, shush is technically onomatopoeia. Well, yeah. William, <laughs> uh, but it's funny you mentioned gate AJ because I once dumped a, a beautiful thin girl. This sounds like a a chubby girl thing, but it's not. It wasn't um, because she she walked like Shaggy, you know that kind of yeah, reverse yeah, yeah. high stepping treadmill thing. She went downstairs like Shaggy from Scooby Doo, and I I couldn't roll with that. So <laughs> you, you got to be picky at the beginning. That's what we're trying to impart to young men. Yeah, yeah. Senatorial candidate Royce White. Please alienate half your votership by telling us what do you think of the first five rules so far? Or don't. I, I like doubling down on the no. 
I, I, I think that's a very, uh, very appropriate, appropriate prescription. Double down on the no. Double down on the no when you can. Um, the location piece is, is good. Um, yeah, I, I love the first half of the list. I'm, I'm, I'm good with it all. Okay, we're going to add, remember, young men out there who des so desperately need this list. You're crying out for someone to help you. Someone that, that, that really wants you to get married, not, not Andrew Tate who, um, or, or someone like that, or, or men going their own way where they want you to, I don't know what they want you to do. Just sit there and continue being <laughs> single until you die. Sounds <laughs> horrible. We're, t we're actually with this list, items one through five, we're going to go through six through 10 that Steph uh, and I rolled out earlier in the week. We're actually trying to get you married as a patriarch to a happy, beautiful, lovely, supportive feminine woman that's that's what you'll get if you use this vetting properly i say by the way don't use it on dates one two three four five that doesn't mean you don't have your peepers out i, I said peepers you'll get in trouble if you have your <laughs> your peepers out uh have your eyes out <laughs> be high alert but it is hard uh, we have some trads that'll try to start dating and they'll be like first question on the first date like how many babies will your hips allow you to have for me? And it's like, no, don't, don't do that. That's not cool. Just be cool. Or they get into geopolitics. We'll just say. Right. Right. Don't, don't get into geopolitics, particularly <laughs> the uh, politics of the region beset by sand and uh, different yeah. testaments of scripture. Don't do that. That's, that's, that's dumb, but also don't, and don't talk about church stuff. If you meet at your church, let's say it's a TLM parish, Talk about your lives. That's cool to know. You want a girl that goes to the TLM, but don't talk about it. Get it. And if you're struggling for things to talk about, young men, this is probably some other show we need to do. If you're talking just about church or veils or having big families or what kind of trad van do you want to buy? You know, one that holds 12 or 18 bodies. That's, that's, you got to, got to, Got to grow some interests and some hobbies and some ways to impress, you know, some some war stories, some sports stories. So that that's another show we probably need to do. But the, the second <laughs> half of the list that that uh, Steph and I built out just so not everyone. Not everyone's heard it. And we, we want to build starting 11 to 15 is number six. If she tells you how to talk Thumper, I'm using both hands here because this is a big one with Catholic crypto feminist girls. If she says the C word at you, that's a cuss word. I mean the word charitable. I don't know what you thought I meant, but charitable. She says be charitable. Thumper, this is automatically a woman trying to feminize a male world. Men and women, we're not from the same planet, right? They're from Venus and we're from Mars or something. We're not. Why would we talk the same? Men are the public ones. We're the idea havers. We're the idea shapers and the idea promulgators. So we have them, we shape them, then we we deliver them to the world. We, we should not be expected to talk like women, right? They're, they're fundamentally private. They have indoors talk. They have indoors voices, whispers. This is pro appropriate, but they should not go around there's nothing less ladylike than a woman saying to a man, oh, like what you just said wasn't ladylike, take it back, bite your tongue. No, that's completely unladylike in the spirit of unladylikeness. So um, this is this is a big one. This is and shushing falls under commandment six here on the second stone tablet. Um, if she tells you how to talk up to an including shushing, then dump her. Um, I'm going to go soft on my table for a little while. Number seven, if she tells you how to dress early on dumper, we did make the caveat that if she's like one of these girls that's more visually stimulated like a guy and she she frames it properly, this can be a very good thing, right? If she's like, wear this, it makes me want to have babies with you. That's good. But but what most girls are doing, they're saying, I'm not visually stimulated anyway, like a like a horny perverted guy, but I don't want you to wear that shirt out to the movies because people will think we're impoverished. That's triply insulting because it's saying she doesn't even care what you look like. She's worried what other people think about what you look like. 
She's focusing <laughs> on the negative, not accentuating the positive. And she's admitting, oh, nothing makes me really want to make babies with you anyway, aside from you making me the man, essentially. And it's conditioned all the wrong they way. They never want to make babies. Those ones never want to make many babies. They don't. They don't. Truth, truth be told, they really don't. They, they want one or two, and then they're done. That's true. Well, but I, I see. I look, man. I gave a talk at Franciscan University when the case for patriarchy came out, and I forget what hall it was in. But it was a packed out hall. It was spring break, but it was a packed out hall. Uh, it was about sat like three twenty five. It was like three fifty, probably in there, standing room only, and it was just a lot of. Otherwise, um, semi-trad or trad Catholic girls that hated abortion, that that knew a lot of the bad stuff, they know the score, sitting like this, right? And this is what I was saying to Nick at the beginning of the show. They 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 know, like, you, you can't get, you know, she, they don't want to date guys that are hip to the Gordon Doctrine. So um, they want to have babies, but they just want to be the man. They don't know how dysphoric they are. But even these girls at the faithful Catholic colleges are gender dysphorics. And they think they're going to, in a in a nice voice, shush you or tell you how to talk or tell you the way their mom did things. Or, well, this is what we're going to do on Saturday nights. I have it all planned out because me and my sisters have these lovely pillow fights with butterflies and flowers and puppy dogs and ice cream. And you're like, no, well, that's not how it's going to be. I, I like all that about you, but we're going to take that. We're going to uproot you out of where you're comfortable you're going to come with me on an adventure and it's going to be the ride of your life. Well, yeah. And let's, let's just be clear that these, these, these women, they had a crush when they were in middle school and the guy went and dated their friend. Like that's why they sit there and yeah. they've just repressed. They've sublimated all their natural, you know, sexual instinct, their natural attractive instinct. No one, when you're attracted to someone would, would approach them in that way. And uh, if you're someone who's going around looking for like a partner that you're just not going to be attracted to, I don't even know what game you're playing. You know what I mean? It's like masochism. Yeah. What do you even what what's even yeah, going self hatred? On? What do you what do you think the purpose of of these things even is? Any number of things. We we could <laughs> go off script if you want, but I feel like your your purposes are going to be all dis you know disordered and delusion from there. If you mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a great point. That's a great point. This is about the name of the game is attraction here. And yeah, it's beautiful for attraction to be a, a bounded mathematical function um, by God's order, by the sacrament of matrimony. It, it works beautifully. But this is what I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that, AJ, because it's like this whole process is driven by the motor of attraction, yours to hers. It's it's fine. This is what I'm saying. You don't have to talk about bailing and, and you know, what's your favorite Thomistic chant, you know, what, what, which Eucharistic prayer do you prefer at, at the consecration? This is not, w w this is about the birds and the bees. When you take a girl on a date, um, it's great to know that you will later be able to live your lives at the Latin Mass together and have interesting talks and, 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 and things like that. But this is a, far more basic. God created man and he created woman from his rib to protect his heart. And you're trying to trying to see if this young woman that you're on date number one, two, three, four, five is going to be a heart protector for you, is going to support you in all your endeavors, is going to follow you like Samwise follows Frodo. No, no, uh, no homo sapien uh, wherever you go on whatever frightening adventures you get. In. And that's really what to get back to AJ's point, they're naturally attracted to. Everyone loves Halloween. Everyone loves safety with a little danger, danger from the context of safety. And that's that's women. They go on these adventures with us, kind of hiding behind you. I'll take the bullets. I'll take the shrapnel. I'll kill the orcs. Just come along. And it, it's, it's me first, but you're with me. You're kind of peering out from behind. And that's what they're naturally attracted to. What's happening with all these girls from... Franciscan University and Benedictine University and, and Ave Maria horror stories dating because the guys aren't manly. The, the women aren't womenly enough and um, the women can control the guys 
And it ends up being just like what we see on a Tide commercial in the secular culture. Women like that they can control the guy that they end up marrying, but then they're not sexually attracted to him. Men don't <laughs> understand <laughs> this. They like the thing. Are like we talking about Catholic cucks here? Yeah, this, is this yes. what we're getting into? Wow. Yes, Catholic cucks. That's what we're trying to avoid, but yes. that's what's all around is us. Is there is there a proliferation of Catholic cucks in, in the American Catholic community? Uh, did you not white know people, this? White white people cucks for for Royce's context. This yeah, what major major epidemic in oh. in white white male white male female relations? Being able to control your man but not being sexually attracted to him. Yeah, I mean it's just yeah. because you can control him. Yes, yes. because yes. thank you, Will. Because yes. you can control him, you're not sexually attracted to him. This is not the female nature. If a little weakly stick armed girl or in some cases, a flabby armed girl can control mm. her man, throw yeah. her weight around. She can't be sexually attracted to him, can she? Well, it, it activates the maternal instinct. If she can boss you about and control you, lead you across the street, like I said earlier, decide what you wear, decide your meals maybe, decide how much you work out, how you spend your time. She's just treating you like a toddler. And the more she does that, the more she sees you as a toddler. So this is why guys have to choose is are you going to be her child or her champion because they're mutually exclusive yeah it's funny aj brought this up and i tried to say it with with the millie mickey and mallory analogy um it's so strange that you have women who work against themselves in that way right like uh, obviously a woman in her soul wants a man who she's sexually attracted to and uh, who she admires but they like work against that and i don't i don't know what kind of derangement needs to happen generationally that like her father and her father's father screwed up so bad that that's what they're striving for but they're literally working against their own interests like do you guys have any idea why they do that oh, yeah, so this, effectively yeah yeah this this mirrors up with my my first point when we get to those about what we're looking out for. So I'll, I'll table mine. But yeah, yeah, I got I got you, Nick. It's generational. That's the answer. You 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 guys don't understand. Yeah, this goes so against their better interest because the second you start bossing around your man, uh well, well there, there's okay, there's there's two parts to the answer. Part A is non servium. This this because of concupiscence, because of the fall of Adam and Eve, there's always, always an element of I don't want to serve. Man doesn't want to serve God. Right. Woman right. doesn't want to serve man. Remember, man's right. the, directly out of Scripture. Man's the glory of God. Woman's the glory of man. This is Scripture. This is inerrant Scripture. Therefore, woman is here to serve God mediately through serving her husband. Um, man is here to to serve God directly, to be the priest, the sacrifi sacrificiant of the home. Well, the, because of the fall, there's always this element where if any of us have a weak moment, we're going to declare that Luciferian credo, non servium. But it got embedded in the culture through first wave feminism in, in the 1800s. It, got, it became re, it preponderated and the non servium became hyper normalized through commercials, television, movie, news, right? And, and, and just stuff that we don't even remember anymore. Well, there are women in the news. There are women in my workplace. That must be normal. That's not normal. It's perverse. For men and women even to be working with each other, this is where most adultery happens. That's one example. So, so that's that's the coupling. Part of it's soft wired. Part of it's hard wired I'll, by I'll, default. I'll, 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 I'll add this 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 question or just this this thought. When we're talking about what people are interested in, we see this a lot in politics, but it, it applies to personal relationships as well there's this kind of logical fallacy <clears throat> and I, I ask you other Catholics sitting here is more of a theological question where people assume that your deepest interest would be in the interest or in the direction of God or yourself. When really I see more specifically with women in, in modern feminism, there's great evidence that well, number one, just socially in general, when you say what the person's interests are, tends to be whatever they're interested in, not really what they're, what's, you know, valuable to them on, on net. But with women specifically, there's a huge masochism and self-destruction that seems central to their interests. And, you know, I mean, is that, 
you know, there, there, there'll be people who would ask the question <clears throat> from the, the theological standpoint, is that a part of women's journey collectively to just kind of need men to steer them back in the right direction? Uh, or, or are, you know, is there something else at play there on an individual basis? Um, I don't know. Just, just a thought. I, I see women as, you know, their interests, you know, we, we think, you know, and you see it, you can see it some, you know, well, women do like strong masculine men. Some women do. Some women will turn their child, their, 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 uh, their man into a toddler and they will find a weird perverted sexual attraction in doing so. And, and they'll, they'll cheat on them. And, and that's where that whole cuck motif is, is real. I mean, that, that whole dynamic is, is a lot less casual and playful as I see it being from a, a good understanding of the pornography situation on the internet and just kind of the, the fetishes and niches that are around. It's like, I'm going to get a guy who supplies all of my financial and economic needs, my material needs. Um, but I'm going to have some, some black guy who's m more endowed or well endowed or whatever. And he's going to be the guy who services my physical impulses and pleasures. And it's like a real, you know, it's a, it's a real, <laughs> AJ's laughing, but it's a real thing, right? I mean, it's like, uh, it's not casual. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not a passive, like, you know, I'm just going to make my man a toddler and, and, be, you know, because I don't know any better. It's like, it's like, uh, it's plotted. Yeah, it's seditious. It's it's premeditated. It's, yeah, it's premeditated. Maybe I'm a little darker than everybody. I don't know. But no, but but even then, right? She she still wants the guy that she can't dominate because that's yeah. the guy that she cheats on the man that she's cucked. Right. So it's important to bear that in mind. And if you think about the idea of cream rising to the top, there's an element of this being good for women because they actually want to find out if the guy that they're testing, the guy whose boundaries they're pushing, can actually push back. Because if he can't, yeah. you want to follow that guy. You have him as your leader. He's the one that you trust. He's the one you go with, ride or die. Of course not. So men are supposed to defend and uphold boundaries in all respects. So to find out if they can do that, women start by testing the man's boundaries, which is by, will you do this? Will you put up with this? That's why no and no is the first two rules are so good. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. My, well, my if, question to you, my, my question is, are, are, are there two... Are there two types of women that we're talking about? Are there the women who actually believe in their their you know delusions of grandeur that they could lead society? They really believe it, like they they are staunch believers. Or there are there the women who are just pushing but really want a strong man? Because I more and more I'm seeing like uh, for example I'm running against Amy Klobuchar. Amy Klobuchar in Minnesota strikes me as a type of woman who really believes in her heart that women could actually lead society to a fruitful place. She's not doing it as a ploy, right? You know, and th there are two, ver I'm, I'm just asking, do you think there are two versions of women or is even Amy just, you know, a victim of not running into the right man who can kind of uh, help her help her see the truth? I, I think it's like with the lap dogs that think they want to be in charge of the family, but end up stressed out of their minds when they actually get there, yapping their heads off. Female politicians are like that. They imagine they can run the show, but they're not really comfortable in that role. They still mm -hmm. resent it deep down. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and in order to run the show they have to tr like truly become like totally deranged you have to do rituals and become a hillary clinton type person and just you're not you're not a homo sapien anymore to actually give your soul over and effectively run and of course there isn't there isn't an effective female politician but uh, to play the role fully i think you just have to debase your nature completely mm -hmm. Which is which the debasement comes through the soft wiring, through the culture, through what they're being told. There's always the like I said, there's always the nugget of maybe man thinking he can be God. Uh, that's that's that was in place there at the fall, you know, by Lucifer, by the serpent. And there's a, there's a concomitant. Uh, long running debasement of woman who thinks maybe i can run the show the way the man does and that's what feminine this is why feminism is the worst form of luciferianism and it comes directly from the fall right god said man will rule over you but what's being foreshadowed there is that the woman will rebel against the man as man rebelled against god that's the order god man woman and then of course children are below below them in the family but um 
yeah, women always are tempted to think that maybe, maybe I can do the man's job. And in society at large today, I mean, look, look at the rest of these rules. Um, well, yeah, most most people in open society are like, that's wrong to say that man can be God. Even secular people say, don't play God. That 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 represents a, a gross, disproportionate breach mm-hmm. against nature. People don't say that about women anymore who think they can be men. Even conservatives don't think that. It was dope what Vivek Ramaswamy said, your boy Roy, the other night to Nikki Haley when he said mm-hmm. that she's just Dick Cheney on McCain three and, and three inch heels. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. See, Vivek gets it on a lot of stuff he he gets it more than these other uh drones you know you know cyborgs who are running as human being politicians but um but you could still say this even to conservatives look okay so rule rule the second half of the list the second stone tablet i think we only got through seven six is dump her if she tells you how to talk number seven dump her if she tells you how to dress number eight is dump her if she doesn't ask you questions about your exciting future adventure Number nine is dumper if instead of asking you questions about what you're going to do with the rest of your life, you could tell she thinks her job or major is really cool, right? And it, there's a little exception if she studied at a Catholic college mainly just to meet a man. And in the meanwhile, she studied philosophy and theology because that'll help her to homeschool. But she should know not to talk much about that, even if you're a philosophy and theology major, mainly ask you questions. Number 10, if she's on social media at all or has ever posted any kind of selfie to get the approval, the plaudits from a bunch of men, that means she's not going to be trying to get them from you, dump her, because that is a foreshadowing, the consistent theme, Royce, I'm glad you asked about this, all 10 of these uh, line items that Steph and I ran through is she will not be trying to get your approval, which is her main goal in life, a wife's approval seeking her husband's approval and and you're really in in some manly ways wanting hers too that's not disordered in the proper sense but she'll be getting it from elsewhere that is the com the commonest theme here is that women who are approval mongers even more than men human beings are approval mongers but women 10 times more so than men if she's not getting all this from you if she can't hear no from you if she can't hear here's where we're going to live from you if she cares way too much what her dad thinks or at all what her mom thinks, if she thinks she can tell you how to dress or talk, it just means she's embarrassed about the other people in the restaurant. She doesn't care what you think or even what really she thinks. If she's on social media posting mass fit selfies, she wants 300 men to say you look hot. Um, if she's on social media in general. And if she thinks her job or major is cool and your future job or major is unimportant. This just means she will be seeking the approval of other men throughout her entire life. And that all women are attracted to a man that dominates them. And I, I don't mean in like a mean way, but that's why Will's answer to you, Royce, was was key. When he was like, the key thing is female sexual desire, ever mysterious, hidden it's different from male sexual desire everyone knows about male sexual desire female sexual desire is the passive principle meaning they're always sexually attracted to a man they can't dominate that's why it's so very important for young men to follow these 10 rules and rule number 11 by the way is in spirit this is my rule number 11 then we're going to go to your guys but i want you to comment on this first the one i'm the first one i'm adding here today we're about to add five for a grand total of 15 rules is in keeping with you want a girl where the the sun rises and sets in your mind, in your world, in your words, in your deeds. She She's looking to you and no one else. So you don't want a girl with over many girlfriends, not too much dependence on the opinions of over many girlfriends, and with zero guy friends. Or at least if she has a, what she calls a guy friend, it's just a guy she works with checking out you know, cashiering at Barnes and Noble or something. Well, that's fine. But but all guy friends are a sham. They have to be utterly expendable the second you move from yeah. fifth date to now we're steadies. And there shouldn't be over many girlfriends because the point here, kind of like we said about even the way she onboards the opinions of her father, which should matter a little bit to her. Her father's, remember, handing her off to you like a football, handing her off to you. 
uh, because of the total thoroughgoing dependence of females on males. You want some dependence on the ideas of the fathers. You're depending yourself on the goodness of the ideas that the father gave her, which is trouble because most women don't have good fathers now. Shouldn't care much about her mom. Shouldn't shouldn't care at all what her mom's saying about stuff. Shouldn't care much about what her, her dad's teaching her. Shouldn't be dependent on female friends, right? You're going to hear the chirping sectaries with stupid opinions uh, the second you start dating a girl steadily. That's inevitable, but she shouldn't care much. And shouldn't have any other guy friends. Not too many girlfriends. Not any guy friends. That's rule number 11. I kick it to you all. Will, what do you say about that? Yeah, I like it. I think the idea that men and women can just be friends is really stupid. And if she thinks that, then you need to educate her out of that viewpoint because she hasn't been taught properly by her father. I teach my teenage girls that there's no friendships with boys and there's no texting without flirting. And remember that simple rule and all your interactions with boys will make sense because they're never just after being your friend. Yes. What do you say? Unless, the, unless they're homosexual, which in which case, then you uh, you probably uh, <laughs> should not text them either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's win-win. It's win-win. <laughs> yeah, Tim, I, I thoroughly agree. And that, that also sort of relates to the uh, don't post selfies on social media or don't, don't leverage social media for your own attention building, your brand building or whatever. <clears throat> and this is something that I... I experience a lot as somebody who's very active on social media, especially Twitter is in the same way that texting the men, and women texting is never uh, platonic single men and single women on social media. It's never platonic. It's peacocking, right? This is it's, it's a honey trap. This is the purpose of it. Um, if it was just the case that Twitter and Instagram and whatever LinkedIn uh, was exclusively male, then it would be completely different. And I get a lot of enjoyment out of Twitter from that platonic male perspective. I learn a ton. I network. I have lifelong friends because of that. But when I see a woman's account come across my feed with an attractive profile picture, and she's interested in the things that I'm interested in, the, the very first thought that me and every other guy had when her account crosses our feed is, is she eligible for, for marriage? Or may, maybe there's a more, more base than that. But yeah, is, is this woman eligible? And every time I click on that profile and there's like a wedding ring emoji or a married to thing or a wife or a trad calf mother of five, I'm like, what the hell are you doing on social? Don't you understand that that's not what this is? You're in a bar right now. You're in a nightclub. Why are you here in a nightclub with your husband at home? And unless you've gotten contractual express written permission from your husband, like Rachel Wilson has gotten from Andrew, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. With regard to Rachel, that yes, yeah, sometimes the the it's an exception. Exception makes bad law, and it doesn't swallow the rule. And Rachel and Andrew are a exemplary couple that are out there in a gifted way. Rachel's been on Tucker Carlson saying women need to stfu and go home. She does this from her home, kind of like people trying to throw the hypocrisy label at Steph. She does this from home. She wrote a book from home. That, that, you know, she and Rachel Wilson are like a tag team. Steph's not on social media. She used to be. Her book, Ask Your Husband, was her Twitter handle. But she she by herself was like, this is getting too much for me. This is a bar. I need to get out. But um, th here's the thing. Friends, even conservative Catholic friends, uh, I want to get everyone else's take on my Rule 11. I want that approval. Friends will always, you know, at a conservative Catholic college, Tell a young woman, her, her female friends will always be like, you go, girl. Don't let him tell you to get off social media. Don't let him tell you any of rules one through 10. So there's no point in having rules one through 10 if she is putting over much stock in the opinion of the chirping sectary female friends who doesn't matter if they're Catholic, doesn't matter if they're conservatives. They all like Megyn Kelly or whatever. They're, they're going to be like, <laughs> you need to dump him if he throws at you those Gordon rules one through 10. Right. So so why have 
Why not tend to that which would invalidate rules one through ten with rule number eleven? That's that's was my thinking. Uh, Will uh, Royce AJ? Yeah, uh, I'll add to this too that uh, I'm back, sort of same position. Uh, what what kind of games are we playing? If you got friends that are guys, or you know, what I mean, guys got friends that are girls. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just I'm like you know. For for me, that's not even like a dumping them. That's like uh, you're not ever gonna hear from me again, ever. I'm not. <laughs> you're not even gonna hear the the dumping happen, because if you're playing games like that with yourself, and and we can always we can always bifurcate it. We got two cases. Either she's playing the games or she's not. And if she's not, we still got concerns. Probably mm -hmm. more concerns. Mm -hmm. So either way, right. to me, it's like. It's like I again, I just am like, I don't I'm I'm not gonna take the time to measure whether it's really, you know, really is a thing to like, no, but you can be friends in this way, or like you can do this sort of thing. I'm like, like, I'm not going through that with you. Yeah. Like we're not I'm not we're not Hard stooping no. to that level. Hard no. I, Cause because again, now we are we are crossing so many wires at such fundamental sort of principle levels around honesty, around you know a, a sort of ability to even even be aware of what you're feeling like there's too much you know opaqueness going on in there like i'm not the let me leave this to the lord you know you know lord you know i i hope that one day you are in heaven with me forever you know as sister maria Gretti said to uh, her killer i hope that you are in heaven with me one day forever but um this isn't this isn't my work you know i'm not, this is this is one that I just am like, yeah, if you're if you're even on the fence about the guy, what what should happen is the guy should be able to voice that be like, no, I mean, just flat out. I, there's just no there's no place we can start. If you got friends, friends, got what should happen is where the girl goes, maybe. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I've been psyoped to think that that really is OK, but I actually feel like your instinct is exactly what I think in my instinct, which is like, yeah, to be honest, that did always seem weird to me. Right. Like, like now you're like, okay, we're at least on square. What now we can talk. He about did it. keep are, buying me food and sushi. He kept buying me sushi. He kept driving me home. You're right. Maybe there is something more to that. Yeah. I mean, for <laughs> like, them, they should, they should have been weirded out by it early enough on. So maybe they haven't adopted the perspective where they're like guys and, and girls just really, I mean, it's weird for them to be friends. So maybe they haven't, you know, sort of incorporated that articulated expression. Right. That articulated understanding of it. But it should be like, yeah, that that weirded me out. So the second they hear it, it's kind of like, I mean, maybe maybe they would be, be afraid to say it publicly, but they'd be like, yeah, my instinct totally aligns with that. Well, what do you think of the dangers of having girlfriend? No, it's, there's nothing wrong with having a, a bosom buddy BFF girlfriend or two. What do you think of the inherent dangers in a in feminist AD 2023 of girl friends. I mean, it would be weird if she didn't have any friends. So we're not saying not, you know, you're, you're looking for disturbed loners as potential wife. But what do you think about my rule as it relates to it's pretty much 85 to 95% of the time always going to be bad advice she's getting from a friend about your this young man's new courtship rule number 11. Yeah, you don't want her friendship group to be like the center of gravity for her because she's going to become a wife and you and the kids are going to become the center of her world instead. So she has to start weaning herself off that. And if she's made all her identity about going out with them all the time, then that's a bad sign. So I think it's a great rule to go for. And like you say, most of the advice she'll be getting is going to be feminist, whether they realize it or not, even if they think they're anti-feminist, they don't realize how fully feminist they are. Yeah. What do you say, Royce? A lot of women don't think they're feminists in America now. After the 70s, self-declared feminists dropped. But I say, in uh, in Case for Patriarchy and Steph says in Ask Your Husband, even though the self-declared feminist percentage dropped drastically, 70s to 80s, 80s to 90s, 90s to now, the amount of incipient feminism yeah, in the so. water is far higher feminism is at an all-time high yeah right i mean that just seems like self-declared feminism I, yeah no i don't I, I think it even you know teeters into radical radical yeah. uh, self-declared radical feminism yeah. 
Yeah, like death to all men. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just living in a different, different, different society. But what I'm seeing from women 18 to 32 is like, um, you know, it, it's just so crazy out here. You know, the the, the, the we, we're talking about it in the context of the relationship between men and women. Um, but it's just, it's more so women in and of themselves that really scares me the most. Like I came across, I'm on social media. I'm, I'm jacked into the, the zeitgeist almost all the time, you know, in some way or another, just checking on, on what people are saying. You know, one of the things I've been talking about a lot on, on the, on online and on the show is like high risk behavior from what appears to be mostly white males all across the world, but certainly in America, like parkour from hundred story buildings. So that, that type of nihilism is, is crazy. But, um, you know, I saw the other day, <laughs> AJ's getting a laugh out of that, but, um, I saw the other day of a, 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 a woman, you know, who had really convinced herself that rubbing her own menstrual on her face was healthy for the skin. Right. I mean, that, that that's how radical feminism has actually gotten out there in the online online world. But you're <laughs> saying it's not? Uh, <laughs> huh? Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't oh, I, I mean, I, I look, I'm not a dermatologist or anything. <laughs> I can't, I can't or a gynecologist. To, a, I can't a derma gynecologist. say whether or not it'll make, make your skin smoother or not. I could probably <laughs> say definitively it's not healthy for your psychology at, <laughs> at the very minimum. <laughs> You know, hey, uh, I'm 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 just saying, and the point I was making is, um, you know, feminism is not only at an all time high; it's it's been warped and perverted to where I could see where women no longer even consider it feminism. They just think mm -hmm. it's like the modern way mm -hmm. of life. Yeah, you know? I think I That's think what I meant. Royce, I, I think Tim, we gotta we gotta point this out. There's a big we've talked about this in other shows. There's a big cultural divide in different parts of the country, and we live, you know, in the the swath of Midwest, you know politically blue states the mm -hmm, sort of mm -hmm. you know sort of british imported polite society you know ethics mm -hmm. and um for us there's not a swath of of women that are like well it's it's in vogue for me to say that i'm not feminist that's got to be you know southern red state women mentality because that's just that doesn't exist here there is no portion of women like conservative women in the midwest are that much more sort of quiet and reserved about it when they have it so i mean we've talked about like this the 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 cultural spheres in these countries they're just too big i mean these this is these are totally different cultures mm -hmm. well totally i think it's moved that. so far that the women who the tradcath women who say no i'm not a feminist their self perception i'm not a feminist are firmly within the bounds of feminism and the women who are uh yeah, I just don't know happy like with that. the you don't know any women like what? The 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 trad cath ones that go, I'm not a feminist. I, you know that's what I'm saying. I'm saying like oh well I, I think just, just none of them. I don't know any of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess like Catholic Twitter and then running, you know, a Catholic matchmaking, sure. stuff like that. It's if you're going to find it, it's going to be in the conservative trad cath sphere, a woman who's sure. gonna say, No, no, I'm not a feminist, and they by definition are and then the women who <laughs> yeah. are not concerned the women who are not concerned with whether or not it's good or bad to be a feminist but think it's moral are way off to the side they're like yeah. all the way that's the death to men death to so really everything's just like shifted so i would argue that there's basically just no non-feminist women today very and few if there are it's men yeah too and, very few yeah, non-feminist men that's true. the real problem Feminist men, I agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the red pill, the red pill's feminist. That's your big point. Yeah. Well, that right, you're always making this point, and no one gets it. They think you're trying to just be a provocateur to the provocateurs. What, what is that? What can you say a word about that? What you're yeah, always why? Them. Why are they saying that they are anti-feminist when they accept all the fundamental drivers of feminism? Go back to the sexual revolution. What's it built on? fornication and contraception and if you are down with both of those two things then you're not rejecting the sexual revolution you're just happy to ride the wave to wherever you go into your black pilled future most of these guys are just happy to drift downstream because they've got no spiritual energy to be able to actually stand against it they just mm. think divorce is the only thing in my future if i get married 
So, hey, why not just fornicate? And then they just join them. They can't beat them, so they join them. Well, the, the online Catholic space, since you asked Royce, which is predominantly people from the Caucasus Mountains, if if we take the cultural labeling seriously, it's it's very white. <laughs> the online Catholic space, it is okay. it's marked by this. If you if you watch, you know, Pints with Aquinas or any of the mainstream Catholic outlets, even even mainstream traditionalist Catholic stuff, they'll always be saying, I'm not a feminist, but hmm. dot dot dot. Okay. And and they'll then it will usually involve some sort of objection to something I've said or something Steph said or something that someone like Steph or, or something Rachel Wilson or Andrew. Oh, so you mean it's it's more like I'm not a feminist, but I still think it's okay to have a couple of male friends, right? Yeah, or, I'm not a or, feminist, but I think right. I think women. I work. think it's okay to give suggestions about where the couple lives or where the family house yeah. is, stuff like yeah. that, right? Yep. I'm not but I wouldn't let my husband tell me what to wear. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All of them go through the rules. I I mean, literally <laughs> go through the rules one through eleven. <laughs> are, you are a fem- this is Steph. Steph, now you are a feminist if you've ever began any sentence. I'm not a feminist, but. And it always <laughs> it always entails. I told you she's harder on him than than we are. I'm not a feminist, but a man should not be telling his wife no. Feminist. I'm not a feminist, but um, she should care what her mom thinks. Okay, this is the the uterus that gave her life. Feminist. I'm not a feminist, but she should care a, a, a lot what her dad thinks, even as a grown woman. That's all. That's crypto back ended. Um, woman side of the family feminism i'm not a feminist but i think the woman should have a, a significant 50 percent say in where she's gonna live don't you buddy no yeah you're a feminist that's your problem i'm not a feminist but she can say she can she can politely help to guide him her man how to talk or how to dress that's what just his doing. tone right tim just the tone no, just the tone of voice will just the tone of voice yeah i'm not a feminist but um but yeah she's going to be excited about her job and her major. And that means she won't be as excited about his that's feminism. And I'm not a feminist, but social media, it's all egalitarian. That's why social media, if guys can be on there, why can't girls? I'm not a feminist. I'm just an egalitarian. Feminism is egalitarianism, right? We're really, really <laughs> toxic. True. Feminism yeah. is what I said when I debated, um, what's his name? Paul Elam with, with Andrew Wilson. Um, we're, we're debating uh, him and another MGTOW guy. I was like, look, the left wing feminists are openly saying women are better than men. Uh, men are trash. And that, obviously that's that's risible. That's just a laughable claim. But um, the right wing feminists are the ones saying women or men are exactly the same rank and they do the exact same things well. So the right wing, as always, is just the left wing driving the speed limit. That's that's. That's how this breaks out. So that's that's rules one through eleven. I got. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, let's go to Will to break out rule number twelve. You Wait, see, what, one more. Uh, let me throw in one more comment too because hey, it's go for cracking it. me up. I'm thinking about this, Tim. You guys are like you guys are on the front lines of this battle. You're like in the trenches. You know, <laughs> World War One. Mm-hmm. Royce and I, we're deep in enemy territory, behind, <laughs> behind enemy lines. We are we are so. double and triple spies <laughs> all the way back in in enemy zone. Yeah. So it's funny because it's like Black you Hawk guys, down. yeah, you guys yeah. are talking about what how you have to fight on the front lines with the people that are like, I'm not a feminist, and we're over here like with the feminists, how, the yeah, radical. Like, feminists. how do we psychologically pry out and disentangle <laughs> these knots so deep down in, and then so build I'm out? The point, from there. I'm at it's the like, point. I'm just, I'm just carrying. A, I'm gonna start carrying a little flask of holy water, <laughs> and at the first debate with Amy Klobuchar, I'm just gonna whip it out and, and rebuke her in the name of Christ. <laughs> if, you that. like, if you do that, that's where we are. We're we're not we're not in like yeah I, I don't have the privilege to be with other like-minded catholics online i don't even have one with the straight up libertarian satanists yeah. over here right yeah, yeah. yeah. you need but, to do that you will be president one day please, somebody yeah. initiate me I, 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 hey i'll take the woke catholic feminists yeah. versus these people i've been with for the last three years these people yeah. are satanists <laughs> but, but, but you get to you get to fight your foe face to face it's it's different what happens yeah, what what's true. happened to us online with other trad catholics they're like yeah. tim gordon doesn't ever change a diaper i mean there's still jokes to this day i don't <laughs> mind the jokes 
but they mean them like daggers that they're, they're, they're like little Satanists, man. <laughs> Tim, with respect to uh, Paul Elam, Nomen est omen again, his last name is the inversion of male. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. <laughs> but That's... with re- with respect to the um, the rule number one nice of feminism. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Rule, rule number one of feminism, never offend a woman ever. And the going through that list that you did um, by saying I'm not a feminist, but it's all an attempt to not offend women. And this is why you and I, with certain projects we're working on in the background, we've we've both come to the conclusion that you it's it is a binary. Are you saying 100 percent of the truth or are you a feminist? Period. Are women supposed to be thin? Are they supposed to be affable? Are they supposed to be submissive? If there's a kind of in there, you have now entered firmly into the B category of you're a feminist. Yes. What 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 you're saying there, Nick, because we've talked this so much to death is if you're like, oh, I, yeah, women are supposed to be affable. But Steph's point again. But I mean, everyone gets in a bad mood, right? Like, Don't don't say that. We want to declare publicly women need to be affable a a woman's frown is a storm cloud on the whole house a woman needs to go around smiling it makes little neurotics in in the house to have a mom that's not smiling so yeah of course she's gonna have a bad day duh do you need to say that women need to be thin well what about during pregnancy their belly has to grow yes thank you for breaking that down for me uh (laughs) Dr. Obijin, genius. I know that, but I mean, normally women need to be thin. Shouldn't we say not overweight? Because no, this is how we're saying it. This is how the movement of Christian masculinism, because this is the circle of trust here. This group of guys plus Elliot, right? Six guys and some other friends of the show. We're setting the parameters because we're taking high ground by nightfall. We're going to take the hill. We're not letting the gatekeepers gatekeep. They, they, so thank you. Yeah, that's that's really important. Yeah, I already, I already vetted them by uh by the the gate observation, Tim. Where I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at the gate, you know. Yeah, it's... yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Elam thing is hilarious. I wish I would have had is. that for the debate. That was a, that was a zinger. That's a zinger. You're the <laughs> inversion of male. You're telling men be manly but never get married. That's the inversion of of masculinity. Uh, <laughs> boom. Hilarious. What well, uh, did you have was this rule number 12? I'm, I'm yeah, leaving. yeah, we're on 12. Yeah, I just want to say before we get into more rules for any guys listening to this, you, you might never find any girl, you might never get married if you're not willing to push back against some feminism in women because you're going to find gotcha. it. They've absorbed too much of it from the wider culture, from the relationships they've seen, etc. So, I know there are some guys out there who are like, she's got to be totally perfect and not involve any effort from me whatsoever. Good luck with that. It's always yeah. going to be a battle. Even if you do find a good woman, there'll still be feminism. You have to defeat and beat down, not literally, every day for the rest of your life because it's part of, we're not Muslims, right? It's part of what it is to be a woman and to be a man. It's the, the curse of Eve, yeah. the curse of Adam. The man's going to shy away from exercising authority properly. The woman's going to challenge it. So these rules are important, but if you take them too autistically, literally, you're going to never, never find anybody at all. So number 12, my one is you could go in and just say, I want to have as many kids as possible. Just drop that and see how she reacts. A softer way to frame it would be how many kids do you want to have? But I just prefer you saying you want to have as many kids as possible and then watch for the reaction. Because I think AJ said at the start of the show, um, the fake conservative, the, 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 the trad girls will say, I don't know, two, three. And then that's it. They won't say as many as possible. They won't say or until there's grave reason for them to practice NFP because another one might cause serious harm, etc. So that's the, my question, number twelve. Great one. I love it. I love yeah, it. This kind of this kind of mirrors up to the points uh, that that Nick was making about um, what they what they really want deep down. I mean, I said this early on because, like I said, I'm behind enemy lines, and that mentality is just. It's just not it hasn't been heard in in decades in these these parts of the country that I want to have as many kids as possible. But I remember I I just right away said it matter of fact. And then I'm going, um, by the way, 
don't convince me that anyone who actually desires someone doesn't want as many kids by them as possible. Right. I always yeah. say that to, to, to young, young boys, young men. It's like, come on, if you got X celebrity that you see as she's, the, you know, the most beautiful woman, you won't want to have as many kids by her as possible. You don't think if a woman got X guy, you know, name your celebrity who they think is attractive, they wouldn't want as many kids by them as possible. That is a natural instinct yeah. to want to, to, um, to, to multiply your love, right? To have your love bear fruits and multiply infinitely as much as possible. So if we're in a territory, again, now we're playing a game. Let, let's at least start from the standpoint that we, we acknowledge that desire naturally wants to multiply itself and grow infinitely. And if we're now there, then we can, okay, yeah, like, like Will said, if there's grave matter down the road and it's threatening your life and even that don't be pretty rare as well. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be loose on the grave matter either. You know, people nowadays will get real loose on that, on that grave matter, but we'll just say sincerely if there is, yeah, well, of course we have to back off. We have to back into, into, into chastity. You know, I always say too, like, I'm like, if that's the case, you know, let's practice continence. Let's see if the Lord draws us back together to say, say something different on the matter. You know? Yeah. AJ, the, the, but if grave matter, all these exceptions that we've been outlining, that we even feel as men, we have to bring up in a conversation is proof of a feminist society. The fact that we have to amend and add addendums to what we're saying. Um, I have uh, very, very far back in the back of my mind, um, vague hopes of one day becoming a stand-up comic. And I have a bit about why... Uh, traffic signs and traffic lights did not exist prior to uh, feminist revolutions. And um, that basically like these exceptions that we put on our speech and even on the, the road to drive, it's like, yes, thank you for telling me that if I had another child, I might die. Do you really think we had to say this at all? Yeah. Like our, our speech, our thought patterns and speech patterns themselves have become feminized. So we have to bring up every nuance and exception instead of just saying like, yeah, I want to have as many kids as possible. Well, yeah, but what if, but what if, yeah, stop, stop it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, I don't, I don't bring up exceptions. I'm saying I can grant the logic of it, but no, I'm not offering up the grave matter exception. I'm like, cause what are we talking about? That's going to get twisted way quicker than anything else. If you, they love, just live by exceptions. Someone, yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, as, as Tim knows, I don't do pre-assertive qualifications. I don't do post-assertive qualifications much those ones you yeah. can do a little bit but again for me it's like the the grave matter is more likely to be distorted to a place of incoherence itself mm -hmm. and so you know i'm just more firmly in the camp that like let's talk about that nature of desire that wants to be infinite it wants to multiply infinitely and if your desire doesn't want that i don't know who i'm talking to it's perverted yeah like we're mm -hmm. yeah it's it's gone rogue mm -hmm. it's, you know dive deep into your soul and just think about that back to those teenage years when you had a picture of a guy on the wall did, did that guy did you want to love them partially or did you want to love them infinitely right when you were come on let's unless you return and be like children you know what i mean it's like get back to these we all know these things we know we have this desire for family we know we have this desire for love we know we have a desire to see that love be just manifested the more kids we have the more signs of our love there are yeah. the better yeah so there's that uh, it's all also cuts to the heart of what it actually means to be a wife i've forgotten where it is <laughs> i think it's in tim's uh feminism just to sources saint augustine is scratching his head thinking what what is it exactly the uh woman gives man as help like how is she to help me it can't be working in the field I, I can't think of anything else that a man can't do better than a woman except for child rearing he needs her help for child rearing so this is really what it's about and if she's not fully committed to that. If there's something more important to her than fertility, family, child rearing, her priorities are all wrong. So this is why I get really blunt with anybody who asks that stupid question like, oh, why have you got seven kids? Do you not have a TV? Uh, do you not have a, a games console? Do you not have anything better to do? Like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'll just say, no, it's because I'm not homosexual. Might have eight <laughs> kids, might have nine kids, 10 kids. It's like yeah. reject the whole framing of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and it's a it's a silly thing to get sassy about to get uppity about like we were in the cracker barrel 
uh, which is a if you don't know if you haven't eaten in the south it's an a american institution is what it is <laughs> an american institution it's a catch basin for crackers for for white people they love it here in the south <laughs> uh, that's why they call it a cracker bear uh, yeah it's just you know goodly baptists here who all wave proudly trump flags it's the reddest state in the union but they still still most of them love the kids they don't hate the kids but they'll come up with a little bit of chaw on their lower lip and they'll be like, hey hey buddy you know what what the cure for too many kids is right and i'm like <laughs> uh yeah i think it's when i like boys you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> or it's when when your wife has a boyfriend then they yeah. won't at least be your kids like if you if you're a if you're a red-blooded straight man you're gonna have lots of kids and by the way it's quite pathetic that we consider seven a lot of kids. Yeah. Used I, to I be mean, average. Seven was average before yeah. contraception. Yeah. Yep. And it, it's wow. it's just a shame what it's how that's Anti, also anti-humanism. Anti-humanism is on the rise. Yeah. An old guy came up to me the other day, shook my hand in the street and just said, this is great to see. You might not believe it, but it used to be normal. That's, yeah, I was, said I said to to one one guy I was I just put on I'm like, do you hate yourself? You want you want two kids? You know I'm talking to young man and he's he's like he's like ah oh, maybe two. I'm like, do you hate yourself? You don't <laughs> want six of you? You don't want eight of you? You don't want ten of you? I mean what? What type of what yeah. type of logic are we even talking about? Yeah, but see, you this, want one of them? You this, you know I well my yeah, one yeah, is yeah. a good athlete and he's like you know I want to see that one go to the you don't want six kids in the NFL. You right. don't want, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even, what are, what are we talking about? This, this, this is the root of, this is the, this is the darkest root of, of modern feminist thinking, right? The, the, and the, the reason why contraceptive is the linchpin of the whole deal is because it's the ability for women to kill a man's legacy. I mean, that's really the, the vindictive, you know, unspoken yeah. ambition of it, impulse of it is like, ooh, I get the opportunity to kill a man's legacy if I so choose because a man's legacy is important. I mean, the lineage from God and legacy is just almost one of the most natural yeah. things. Uh, and yeah, people, but but men have accepted that, and right? Like, yeah, I mean, why do I, I mean, think about, think about, a, think about a society just in general that places more emphasis on their elderly than they do that their their children that shows you a society that has a sort of you know perverted idea of legacy to begin with it's like and a perverted idea of sex too. A, the yeah. social security thing yeah. is a big a big canary in the coal mine for that it's like yeah we'll bankrupt the country to make sure that all the boomers get their entitlements right and if yeah. our children are starved and come subjugated to you know tyrannical china then so be it i mean because you know hey who really cares about the kids anyway? I mean, this whole legacy deal is a bit of a scam. I mean, these people are anti-Christian for sure, to say the least. Anti-sex. Sometimes the, the woman's response to this question is two or three because she doesn't really like the idea of having sex much. And forget the NFL yeah. and any worldly achievements. Yeah, right. Limiting your family size is also limiting the number of potential saints for heaven too. That's what we're really doing right as patriarchs in the domestic church of the family. I think it was St. Basil the Elder and his wife, St. Amelia. They had nine kids, five of them canonized saints. <laughs> That's what it's about on a deep level. Yeah, thank wow. you. Wow. So they probably had a lot of sex. Clutch your pearls, trads, but those yeah. two probably had a lot of sex over their married life. And they that's a good love. thing. And if you're squeamish about that, then you don't understand what marriage is about. You know yeah, why. using your, your math, Will, from, from what you, I think you posted it on Twitter. Um, they would have had to have, if the average is 301 uh, coitus sessions for one successful pregnancy. One live birth, yeah. They've all, They've almost had Six twenty two hundred times. It's like these. That was, I think, one of the most radical yeah, chapters yeah, in Tim's like book. Seven hundred times. Like yeah. Even so, I mean. Yeah, one of the most radical chapters in up, in right? Tim's like, book that, like, I actually screenshot those two sections and sent them to you, Tim. Was the desexualization of marriage and the sexualization of the single life, and it's it seems so simple like well of course because you're not supposed to have sex before marriage but it was never it was never articulated to young nick in catholic school in catholic high school that the most 
sexually exciting and romantic time of your life is within marriage. The yeah. opposite was taught to me. And therefore, the idea of having nine kids is for like crazy weird trad cats. Right. But even a lot of trad cats have embraced at least half of that lie, right? When you're like, look, marriage should be a very sexy time. Pre-marriage should be a very unsexy time, right? And and the world tells you the exact opposite. A lot of trad cats are like, well, that's half true, half half false. A lot of trads are like, well, yeah, you 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 know, you have sex and it's it's uh it's evil and you you get it out of <laughs> the way, you get it out of the way. You wet tweed while you do it. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you got to cover both your faces with a bag. You got to get back That's to churning what the butter. Jews do it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's that's part of the Orthodox Jewish tradition, right? Is that put like a sheet between they them? They cover, something? yeah. They cover the. I think they cover the women when they. Yeah, that's one yeah, of the one of the tra- you know old traditions. That's weird. Yeah. That's that's definitely not not as pleasurable in, in, unless there's something wrong with the woman. Um, I. Yeah, I, it, it's weird. It should be marriage should be a very sexy time. And, and guys, you know, trads will even spurg out and clutch the pearls on on us. Uh, well, me and you and, and, and Nick, we've done shows where they're mad because we're like, make your marriage sexy that it, you don't want a sexy premarital premarital life because that's always grave matter. But it should be very uh, uh, steamy and sultry between husband and wife. The marital act, the formal act of marriage is intercourse. And this is what it's all about, is bringing you and your wife together often, like frequently, so that you will be like this, thick as thieves. That's that's the whole that's the whole point. Hey, what yeah. rule are we on? 13? 13. 13. Who's got that? Nick? Nick, you got sure. Your- yeah. Okay. It's a toss up for me. And maybe, I mean, I'm going to have to save some of these for the honorable mentions. Um, so it's, it's definitely a toss up between, all right, I'll just go with this one. So Rachel Wilson made this tweet a while ago and it just blindsided me how precious this is. And again, forgive, forgive my wet back naivete as a 25 year old discovering the world for the first time so maybe this is old hat for all of you guys but she said that when she was uh, whenever she's out in public with andrew and they're at a barbecue or a function or something she will make him a plate and bring him the plate he's never he's never going up and you know standing in line to do she's going to serve him that and so i think rule number 13 is pay attention to is she bringing you snacks on dates after you guys are steady is she is she making you cookies <laughs> is she Real. cooking for you i i, I genuinely believe this yes, because yes guys t- so th- it shows a couple of things again it might sound banal but it shows a couple of things to me the first is she's thinking is he hungry is he going to be able to do the activity she's thinking about you in her off time not only that, women uh, can do alchemy with food, right? They are they are witches in a non-satanic sense of like, they're going to take all these ingredients and they're going to intend to make you full and happy with it. And if she's actually allowing herself to consider you and then to consider your pleasure and then to pre- present it to you, and especially if she does this in public, like Rachel Wilson's tweet. Um, I think that's, I think that's a keeper. If the, so to keep it in the form that we're trying to do here, if you are always serving her physically serving her publicly or privately getting the drinks, making the dinners, uh, have you eaten? Do you want, like, do you need something? Are you third? All these things. Dumper. Yep. Dumper. I like it. And this is one that even when, when Rachel made that tweet, it, that, it was a banger. Everyone responded to is about two months ago. I I thought back, this is, this is funny, how many of my wife's instincts are just good. Long before she and I were setting the Catholic world on fire with, with books on this stuff, just when we were young kids who had been in the same friend group, each dating other people, but really having strong affinity for each other the second we started dating 
Steph would do this. We'd be at a function. She'd be, here's your plate of tacos, right? She knows like, I don't, oh, it, I don't, I'm not big potato eater, right? That's not a slur on the Irish. I literally, I don't make baked potatoes. I find it stressful. Here's your baked potato made. Uh, if we're at a, at an event with baked potatoes, I, don't, I can't imagine, I can't fathom what that event <laughs> <laughs> but but it's something she knew she learned to, to do. And just anytime, if it's a make your own street tacos thing, here you go. First thing. And this is long before we really even talked much about feminism. It's just good instincts. It's good instincts that somehow hadn't been stamped out of this woman. So I, I think th th this is a lovely number. I don't even know if that's a, I don't even know if that's a Catholic or, or, or Christian principle, uh, uh, um, tradition or or uh culture you know culture thing is a woman just makes a man's plate just you know by way see of it sounds i mean i feel it, i genuinely feel silly bringing it up because like this is what i thought was going to happen all of you all of you distinguished gentlemen are going to go this uh, how could you even bother pointing this out that's what happens but let me tell you guys like it's dark out there for us young doubt. guys and no when uh just a small anecdote to support this um i had i was renting out um a home that i owned to uh a gal who was significantly older than me it was completely platonic i, I swear um <laughs> and but one morning i was going to work and she had just taken some of the food that we had from the night before put it in a tupperware and handed it to me and she's like don't forget your lunch and i didn't have lunch for the day because i'm not thinking about that because i'm a guy just going to work and i i'm not kidding you i was so touched i felt so loved and cared for i thought about that for the rest of the day and then for the next two weeks that this woman was just like here here's food for your day and it's, again it seems banal but that's what it is. That's literally all we need. And Tim, you and I have talked about this too. If a woman puts $1 in, she's going to get $100 out of that man. If she just does that little thing, he's going to come home and be like, do you want Do you want an addition to your, to your home? Would you like me to move a heavy car out of the way? What do you need? I will do whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that's so true. That's so, and that's why this isn't just macho bullshit, red red pill like shit talking. This it's really true. You put in one dollar to the input output machine, ladies who are listening, the guy will love you. Something simple, and the stakes have never been lower. Right? It's you. You could be so impressive just by doing all this. By the way, none of these rules are Christian. These are natural law rules that are for all human males and females. So yeah, I don't uh, yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know one culture. I don't know one culture where the men serve the women food. No, nope. find, find me a find American me a Western no. modern culture. <laughs> yeah, except yeah. that. Well, yeah, this one. You know, there, there's all these. You know, you know, um, male feminists. Uh, you know, vegan souffle chefs that that do. You know, the the hibachi and they. You know, they get real romantic and all that with with the food preparation and they want to. You know, they. You know it. It's 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 a strange world out there, I know. But I'm just traditionally speaking, I don't know any culture in in history, in any ancient history, where the men serve the women that food. I mean, that's just completely a postmodern. The Oracle at Delphi or something. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe yeah, maybe Cleopatra. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, yeah. it's a sacrifice. <laughs> that sacrifice at right does it count? We we have to stretch. We're like the Oracle at Delphi. You know, Apollo. You're ser serving Apollo food. Yeah, right, <laughs> like, right. But this is how desperate men will get. When we did one of our recent sea masks, Will and Nick, people, we we said the cooking thing, or maybe they said it to me and Steph. Oh, well, you know, men are better at chefs too. Yes, at the very high level of the bell curve, men are chefs too. But what they're doing is they're using this as a coat because these men are like a biatch cooking at home. And it's like, well, look, yes, men probably can natively have the skills to be become better like everything chefs Mid if they midwives, want to gynecologists yes, they, right any of them <laughs> but that doesn't <laughs> yeah no it doesn't mean it that all the your conscience and i'll hey guys i'll i'll take the bullet here i i mean this stuff this stuff happens to me the difference is what i'm saying and what tim and i we've talked about it is and kind of will what you hit at is like you gotta you gotta ride this stuff out you know like you you have to understand what the normal thing is. The normal thing is if you love someone to desire to serve them. 
right. desire. But as a matter of fact, it is men modeling that when they're doing it to the woman saying, hey, there is a sense in which my love does makes me desire desiring to be a you know to be of service now what's disordered about it is like you know when i've said this tim too but but when um when when catholics take the servant leadership thing to an insanity point right like like yes i know christ said that if you will lead you should serve i know that but i also know that jurisdictional authority is directive goal oriented authoritative you give this like everyone naturally knows that leadership involves that it's part of the profundity of why he brings in the sort of mindset thing, you know, like the the serve the one who should lead shall serve is because taken from the context of what's so instinctively natural to everyone, which is a leadership guides and leads and directs, chooses the goal, works everything toward it, is that now to understand this in service, it, namely in service to God, who you are subservient to, right? Now it sort of opens the doors wide on it. Right. And so, Nick, you don't have to feel ashamed of it. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll take the bullet. I'm not going to sit here and laugh around and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it goes for me. When it doesn't, like, that would be cap, you know? Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not doing that. But I'm just we, saying, we ain't you, do little, you do a little yeah, cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do cooking. I have to oh. eye out for the stuff, not because. I'm proud because it's like we we got to get this done. It's a it's a bit of battle still. We yeah, yeah we're, okay. this is why I said we're in. I'm we're way deep in enemy lines yeah. out over here. Oh no, it's doubt. like we're working at, in the principles, which is right. love desires to serve, and let's try. This is what it looks like. This is what it moves toward. But we can we can hang in the principles as long as we need to. So it is what it is. AJ, I can I can send you a. Signed copy of Asked Your Husband from Staff. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I know you're 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 like an honorary C mask ho. You and Royce are like honorary <laughs> C mask regulars. It's true. Like I you you look, some of this stuff, there's a very fine line between where are norms like definitive and where are norms fudgeable fungible. There was, I don't know if you guys remember the beginning of the summer, like diaper gate, where I was right, like, right. look, I, I said on Twitter, I think that mega chick said a man should never be changing diapers. And I was like, amen, like newborn diapers, the newborn just around the mom. So it's it's a it's a kind of ergonomics that runs pretty one to one. Now, I, I think I've changed a couple diapers of, you know, my one year old, but it dropped from first baby, second baby, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, right. seventh. It's like I can count on one hand, maybe on one finger, how many of um, Penny's diapers I've changed. Texas, Steph is going to be texting me from down there like, you've never changed any. You need to tell them you've never changed any of Penny's diapers because it's a point of pride for her. I did more for, for Abby's in them. But, um, I did say in the same tweet, no cap, no capping, that I, you know, because I'm around the older kids more often, particularly the first year of the newborn's life. This is how it works with dads and moms. I uh, I have my an eldest child, a handicap, who's still in diapers that I change more often than staff. So I, I wasn't I wasn't um, fronting. I, it was literally just this is this is how it is really in my household. Well, I changed more of Abby's diapers, but I'm not saying that as pre-assertive qualifications for babies. Right. Yeah. The moms need to be doing it. And for food prep, it that, that seems like one of those natural categories um, just to, just to, to bulwark Nick's rule a little bit that, yeah, the guy might have more natural skill for it. Sometimes I'll barbecue, I'll grill out. Is, is this a, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to, I, I was just going to say yeah. that, you know, if, if you're um you know, every once in a while, right? Yeah. Every once in a while, if it's like, you know what, you know, if if it's on in on your terms, I, th I think the most right. important caveat right. to make is the terms, the conditions of which. That's if it. she's forcing you to to <laughs> to cook food at the at the uh you know by by keeping intimacy and sex you know print lockdown. Ransom. These are the kind of things. Yeah, yeah. These are the kind of things that are just abhorrent. Now, if you wake up on a Sunday, uh, you know, if you, you know, wake up on a Sunday, go to church, go to mass, come home, watch a football game. I don't know if people still watch football games. I really don't, but I know people do. And you throw steaks on the grill and you go and you skewer some vegetables with it and you serve the whole family, you know, daddy, daddy barbecue. OK, yeah. you wake up one morning and, you know, the kids are snow day or whatever. And you happen to be staying home from work that day and you 
throw 30 pancakes on the griddle and just, you know, wife happens to eat. Okay. If you're coming home every week and you're working a full-time job taking care of the house and you're making, you know, souffle, uh, you know, experimental with the garnishes the and the accoutrement, you know, now you're a cuck. And, that, you know, this is a very <laughs> easy line to draw, in my opinion. I agree. Thank you for thank you for the common sense there. Okay. Yeah, because but this is also grilling, Tim. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say the dad the dad grilling happens one to one to three times a week in the summer, but that's that's three months. You know, the rest of the time it's it's yeah, yeah. you know it's on mom, and, and it makes sense. Sorry, go ahead, AJ. And no, no, and the point is is that when the desires are right, when the the when the the principles are right, it's going to veer toward that. So I don't have any doubt about that. Right, we're we're young in our marriage. So as more kids come, because we are, are recognizing that desire, to, you know, desire desires to multiply itself and more of these things fill out, then it's going to be a natural convergence toward these things that you're talking about. When you have one kid, you're early in, in it, you know, and you're still, you know, you're still prying apart things and working things out. Like, yeah, I, I feel like it's just logical that you're going to have some interchange of things i'm going to change more diapers with my first child than the second and the third than the fourth and the fifth right it's just gonna it's just gonna continue that way you know what i mean that trend and that just that logic falls from that that's where i would as will was saying and and you know people like nick is like one thing is like if you if you as tim said if you go autistic on this and you start prematurely blowing your load you know yeah. cutting people off at at the yeah. root like you're the idiot there hang in there <laughs> You know what I mean? Like hang in there because it should go toward, it should go toward these things. That's what you're looking for. Are we headed toward these natural things or are we lying to ourselves yeah. about any number of things? I was going to say one of the, one of the things you'll see with women, or at least you hear with women is women have this, um, this delusional sense of, of the whole power dynamic between men or the economic dynamic between men and women around food choices and, and the amount that should be spent on food and like first dates and, a lot of this kind of thing where it's like, you know, oh, don't take me to Red Lobster. Don't take me to Olive Garden. Don't take me to any chain restaurant. I need to go to, you know, in here in Minneapolis, it would be somewhere like Manny's, probably more familiar to people across the country like Ruth Chris or, yeah. you know, I need to go to one of these five star. No. Right. And then, you know, you get in a relationship and you guys are living together and she just refuses to cook at all because she thinks that, you know, you guys should be eating out every day or Uber Eats or you know, you should be going to some hibachi restaurant and watching some weird little Asian guy flip shrimps into some, some, uh, you know, bucket or whatever they do. Right. And they, th this is un unreasonable and it's, <laughs> it, it's ever more popular too. Uh, it's not, it's not an right. anomaly. Right. And she's, she's on contraception. Just, right. She's, you know, she's that. all that she's on, contraception. you know, that part. Like, yeah. When so. that, when that video went viral about the like Indian looking dude taking out the black chick, to a, a restaurant remember did you guys see that and she wouldn't get out yeah. of the car he yeah, got I out saw that. The door. she's like i don't go to chain restaurants you know steps direct quote from steph we were just on her laptop mm -hmm. at night together direct quote that bitch should be eating out of a trough yes <laughs> That's what she said and the scary <laughs> part about and the scary part about it is that the scariest part about it is she wasn't even attractive no, I mean, the, the, no. the female, the female, you know, perception of their own attractiveness in this social media psyop is is quite astounding is the women their expect. I mean, if you're going to go by a material uh, hierarchy or a, a physical aesthetic hierarchy, half of you, not uh, nine tenths are you are way below the curve. Number one, a lot of you are more of you are fat than ever. Just respectfully, you know, just not even being demeaning. It's just a fact that the obesity is way over and above anything it's ever been. So aesthetically, you're not good to look at, which is why they want to tell you that Lizzo is attractive. They're trying to like, you know, bottom load men's expectations to cater to these women who don't deserve it. Now I'm getting kind of into, you know, mm -hmm. traditional red pill, uh, happy talk, but you know what I mean? I mean, that, that is the reality. That's a real thing that people deal with. Maybe not so much in the Catholic community. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but just women. In no, it's a thing. It's still a thing. Okay. Still a thing. Okay. Yeah. You can't, you can't body shame. Um, I've been really enjoying this, guys, but I've got a lesson coming up, so I've got to go. But uh, great value for all the young guys listening. I think it's worth listening to a few times and taking notes on. Love you, bro. That great good. seeing you, Will. Take care, Will. Good to talk to you all. Take care. He got his rule out. And and he was here for 
13 fifteenths of us destroy collectively destroying Royce's senatorial campaign. So that's good. Uh, just, just joking, Royce. We, we want you to be Senator. Um, do you want to No, I, I, I think it'll be a, an amazing base thing. If a man, if a man like you, who doesn't talk, you're like Trump times five. You don't, yes. you don't pull any punches yes. and you talk this way. If you can still, it's kind of like a shit test. Like what we're, yes. we're giving men shit tests for women. America still has a heart. If a man that talks how you talk could become Senator, I think that that'll be amazing. And with that against a, against a radical feminist, against a radical feminist, after you've gone on this show <laughs> and said, what what's what's your rule? Rule number fourteen. What what is it? Go my much. rule. Yeah. What's my yours? rule. My rule would have to be um, if she if she uh, has one of those crystal balls in her social media profile. That's it. Don't. <laughs> if she has a crystal ball in her social media profile, if she has any any. Any combination of crystal ball, uh, leaves, uh, leaves, coffee, uh, stars, the little fairy pixie, um, you know, any of these sort of uh, strange esoteric astrological numerology type deals in her post in her social media. If you can find one in her past social media profiles, if you can go back and see an inactive null profile that had those things in it, just run for the hills. That's so funny. I love it. Run for the hills. It's just that's just outright paganism. She's probably, you know, she she may in the future be one of those women that finds it, you know, some in some way uh, beneficial to 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 use the menstrual as a as a facial cleanser or <laughs> a, you know a, a, a sea mask of, of sorts. So that's you know that's my prescription. Watch for the social media. Social media tells you a whole lot. I know that's no. why, it's, but it's also a rule. Just no social media. If she's got social media, you, you yeah. can try. You could try test case. Hey, hey, sweetheart. Now, now we're we're a steady thing. You don't tell us on the first five dates. You're just watching. Okay, first five dates are over. No more social media, and and she's gone. Then you won't have to worry about. You can bet for crystal balls and leaves and astrological signs in her, in her avatar. Oh. In those first five dates, and well, and you know, a lot of guys, and it, well, we're getting to a point now where, and that's that's that would be a great hard line. That would be a great hard line rule to honor. But if we're talking about guys actually being able to have any, I mean, social media is so proliferated now, right? They're always going to hit. This is what they're going to hit you with. They're going to say, "Well, everybody has it," right? Or you know, if, if they are working, which, you know, if, if if you just started being steady and you're in a more steady relationship, but she was working before to get her to stop working completely may be a battle that you have to fight continuously as well. Right. Um, but if she is working, they'll say someone will say, oh, well, it has to do with my work or, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, there's all social media is like the gift that keeps on giving and, and undermining, a, a, you know, relationship, traditional relationship. So it's a it's a difficult one to say. I think it's somewhat difficult to say no social media upon arrival in in the relationship. But I guarantee you, if she's got a crystal ball in that social media profile, you got big problems. You're probably never getting to a place where she would give it up because that or wearing thing, crystals, right? Because yeah. let's say she doesn't have a social media, but she's wearing crystals. She has crystals on the counter, you know. Because it that's just a digital representation of the same sort of thing that uh, yes. Mercury is in Gatorade or whatever, and so yeah, yeah, crystal, you know, Emma, if she's if she's got an amethyst, uh, you know, keychain or you know, asks any, you what your sign is. Yeah, well, you know, if if she wakes up and she reads her zodiac before before the Bible, I mean, you know what you're dealing with. You know, zodiacs are cool. You know, they're interesting. They're, you know, I I talk about anthropology you know, and it's interesting you know even with race me and tim we talked about race the other day for a long time on the phone but i was talking about it on my podcast it's like you know we can go back to caucasoid negroid mongoloid we can talk about the great groupings of of the human species hundred thousand years back that's interesting you know it's fun to see a digital animation of people crossing the barren strait that's all good uh you know so i i get it there's some interest in it but if you wake up and that's your priority you're uh you're, you're way off the, off the path, the beaten path. Someone asked, 
me on a YouTube video the other day in, I guess, a chat. Steph checks him. I, I don't. He was like, can you, why don't you do a future show about being a mixed race couple? I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, <laughs> Steph, that's because Steph is half white, half Mexican. And so she's she a comes. Kid. Yeah, she's a white. I was like, I don't this for one thing, it's not an interesting topic. And secondly, I don't even think we qualify. So we would. <laughs> Yeah, your, yours and my conversation flushed to the front of my brain, Royce, where I'm like, look, it's a topic, but um, it's being misapplied by, yeah. I think, a, a lot of people on the right. Like race, race is not nothing, but it's 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 damn near it's damn not everything. And yes. uh, yes. and and, yeah. and there's very few people saying it outside of our little conversation. And so, some of my friends, me and Nick talk about this, too. They get it right. I think Pice the 12 said. Look, it matters, but it matters a hundred times less than the distinction between male and female, right? Right. And you know. religion. Oh, yeah. And, and and religion is the culture builder. Yeah. So it's like, look, a, a a black Catholic dude like Royce, like we have the same culture from the same country, no yeah. less. Yeah, yeah. A black guy and a white guy who have the same religion from the same country and they have the same ideology. Sure. There, there. Uh, um, yeah. There's also a distinction between glasses wearers and non-glasses wearers. Race, ethnicity, uh, kinship group. That might be more important than the glasses in terms of culture formation, but a hundred times less than culture. So we don't have to pretend it's nothing. But you can have and will have a successful rest publica if you have a small enough little polity with people of the same basic ideas especially those coming from religion. And you can, that's, yeah. that's one way you can do mini, mini pluralism though. Pluralism is, is a G H E Y Y. Uh, I believe that brings us to number 15, last but not least, mm -hmm. Mr. AJ Barker. What's your, what's your rule to add? Yeah. So mine, um, mine gets that, that level deeper. What I, what I would tell people to look out for. And I really think that this is good advice. This is advice that I've given to other people. What, what I think to look for is um, a person's capacity for suffering. So how well do you think that person can suffer? And I'm talking, yeah. I always make the joke like, you know, in in the dark night when Joker looks at the, the Asian dude who works for the big bank and he points at him, he's like, you know, I know a squealer when I see one and that's him. That's what you're going for is like when you're in the presence of someone, you can be like, is that person capable of suffering? No, they're, they're not going to be Padre Pio yet. Like, I, I get that. I get that. You know, they're not going to be Mary Magdalene, you know, perpetual penitent or something. But, but the point is, and, and I would say, actually, this would be the even deeper distinction. The point is to say, um, are they someone that hates suffering or are they someone that kind of has the instinct to think that there's something good that comes through it? Because those are the two poles. They're the people who hate it. They want nothing to do with it. They're going to flee from it. And all these things that you're talking about are going to be signs, of, especially if you go back to your early ones, Tim, related to them withholding affection, you know, retaliating. I call it a retaliatory boycott. So someone retaliates with a boycott. That's, well, that's it's, it's very spiritually immature. That's it's good. very spiritually immature. And it's a root of a lot of other problems. And um, so to me, if, if someone's activating that, they they not it's not just that they're not good at suffering yet they hate suffering and there's there that's a no go to me that's that's an actual like no go whereas if someone you're like all right i feel like this person could suffer another way i put it is like how well could this person be jobed you know if they were mm. jobed how well could they handle it no they're not going to handle it like job they're not going to get every single thing you know physical spiritual social thrown at them um uh, because that was by by divine providence for that one thing to take place in that way but but it's a good image of it how could that person be job how would they handle being job and most people you can look at them and go just like you know the joker and dark Knight, nah, that one i know a squealer when i see one mm. and so i really think you know we talked too earlier in this show we were talking about where this starts when when the when you say the the woman doesn't really have a, a attraction toward the men that they're seeking to date. Where does this start? And we, and I know Tim, you guys mentioned, well, this goes a couple generations back and, and with men, I really think the core of this, right. The, the deep core of this is that when 
they had that crush and the person didn't want them and they started suffering that heartache. Cause when you want something and you don't get it, you feel heartache. If you're hungry and you don't get the food, you feel disappointment, right? You can think of hell as a perpetual desire for finite goods that you can never have because you're not in a finite place. So it's just a perpetual agony of heartache. Your hunger never wanes. You know, when kids ask, what, what are punishments in purgatory? Like, that's how I imagine them. You now have this desire that feels the heartache and, and you can't satisfy, you can't repress it. In no way can you satisfy it. And you know that you can never satisfy it, but it keeps going. So so to me, when I look at the 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 young woman who who or who's going, I don't have that sort of natural attraction to someone. What they need to do, what they need to do is, is ask forgiveness for the sin that they committed when they were suffering and they tried to repress it. They were suffering because they lost someone. It's not what someone else did to you. That sin, it always springs, as Christ said, it always springs from the heart outward, mm. right? What, what they need to do is they need to look at that time where those wounds came up in them and they fought and they repressed them. They fought back in them. There they incurred a sin and they need mm. to ask forgiveness for that so that the, the Lord can reopen their heart to desire, to wanting things, to wow. the sort of natural and good vulnerability that comes with desiring. They need to get to that point. And it's, I mean, it's the same lesson, obviously, for, for young men too. There's some point where you took on a hardship and, and where you erred is that you sinned in relation to that pain because you didn't want to suffer. And you need to go ask the Lord to forgive you for that, right? Be absolved of it. You're probably already absolved from your previous confession, but bring that to the Lord and now actually start that healing process where you can now actually birth real desire. And so that's the thing for them. If they're still in the camp where they hate suffering, they need to get to the point where they sinned and, and in hatred of suffering, in not seeing the divine providence of suffering, they rejected and wanted nothing to do with it and mm. turned from it. Because mm. that's that's probably the biggest error in their whole life, right? And now we just we I, have a culture that doesn't believe in confession, doesn't believe in repentance, doesn't believe in penance, doesn't believe that these things can get course corrected. So that's where the generations then come in, where we have generations of people who have lived with this, parents who have sinned against their own suffering, who then had kids who then sinned against their suffering. And now they have kids. And now here we are, third, fourth generation on, where it has totally fallen from the norm to confess, yeah. to be penitent, to repent for things, to try and turn around, to try and catch out your own faults. And now it just runs amok. And so from the time, Tim, as we talk, if you're Protestant, what do you do after you're eight years old? <laughs> and you inevitably mortal sin. If even in the first moment of having your use of reason, you don't turn to God, Thomas says, you have mortally sinned, mortally sinned. So what do you do, right? Well, now you can just extrapolate that out because Catholics who are raised Catholic, they don't get it. They're mortally sinning. They don't get it. They don't see the urgency of it, right? Um, and so so that to me would be a thing. Look for, do they hate suffering, right? And then if they do, if they're fixed in that, you just, all right, pray for them. Hope that that God penetrates, but keep it moving. Dumper. Yeah. Oh. And I think, I think, AJ, first of all, Oh, unbelievably good point. Unbelievable. Second of all, I think if the, if that woman is virtuous in the way that you're describing and she can endure suffering, it will look like gratitude. Yeah. And and that's I brought this up before what I observed with Steph. I haven't had the privilege of meeting your guys' wives or wills. Um, but but every every good that Tim facilitates is met with a thank you, dad. And there is no, there's no griping about inconveniences or about hardships. Oh, it's cold outside and we're trick or treating. I don't know. I wasn't trick or treating with you guys. It was just always cold when I was a kid. It's like, but that's awesome. Cause we get to go trick or treating, you know, there's no griping about I'm hungry and, and bitching about why are we eating yet? It's just endless gratitude. If, yep. if she, if she can suffer and then the kids, I think would probably be able to suffer as well um dignified because the kids learn gratitude from the mom not the dad exactly exactly in the precise fashion that you're you're pointing out nick and what's genius about aj's answer is steph steph's texting me from downstairs she she loved that number 15 um as, as i think everyone here does what's genius about that answer aj is you tying together capacity for suffering the dostoevsky in term does yeah. does so and so have a high capacity for suffering are they worthy of their suffering that's the dostoevsky in term yeah. with gratefulness and one thing i learned i'll see a lot of these list items 
I've learned to look for from being married, from, from just making the best decision of my life to settle. I dated a lot of women in college and settling on my, my best friend, Steph, who is dating. We were both dating different people at different times, but, um, I'll never, the capacity for suffering was all of all of the 15 list items. Now, the one that I was specifically attracted to in staff uh, yes. of all the yes, spirit always things. because she had such a, an outrageous childhood. Some of, some of, you know, her childhood, some of you don't, but it, it's one of the more outrageous childhoods um, that people have ever heard. Uh, we I don't think we've ever fully said publicly what, what it comprised, but, but wild, wild. Um, um, that, her capacity for suffering is through the roof. It made her loyal, yep. native loyalty and native capacity for suffering through the roof, such that she, who's her favorite character in all of literature? Yeah, she loves Jane Austen, but she loves no character the way she loves Samwise Gamgee because of loyalty and high capacity for suffering on behalf of the person he's serving. So like we were just friends uh, at this point. And literally I would, I was always getting into scrums and, and fights and things, but I think I was a senior in college and skating outside a subway and Steph and a group of our friends were just sitting there watching me. Um, I was trying to, trying to burial flip a, a four stair, I think. And it was outside this one subway in, in Allen, Texas. And a business owner came out there at close time. It was a sparklets water thing. And he was an old man, kind of old man. And he was, threatening me and i was just making fun of him and trying to make the group of friends laugh and then he came over with a sparkless water bottle and he was going to hit me with him and i was just laughing in his face and i was like grabbing his shoulders laughing and steph got because we were close weren't dating yet but got close. she just shot in front of us and i don't think he knew that she was kind of with my group and she's like you're acting like a psychotic dick and she was just shot in front of us and i'm like you know i was I lifted. She she wasn't worried. She's was just worried about me, love for me. And it was instinctual. Yeah. And she didn't have that for anyone else in the group. And it was like, this is this is very obvious where this is going. The the purest motives and just willingness to self-sacrifice and willingness to suffer is something that's shown up so much. Um yeah. even in even in our 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 eldest Abby story, you know, the all the tremendous suffering that we've gone through with our eldest, all the many brain surgeries, having half the brain effectually removed or diswired i she was she was just amazing like i brought her into the faith and and i learned about suffering because it, it she just had yeah. such a unique set of circumstances as a kid she so job like and i'm like this is um masculine exemplary masculine levels of capacity for Dostoevsky and suffering that 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 is reflected not just when Abby has another brain surgery or some that's the really hard stuff um but it's reflected in rules number one and two which is why it's the perfect capper she's willing to suffer no you know frequently yes and that, yes. that's why it, it caps it all so perfectly I'm glad I'm glad you were the fifth one did you guys have any questions comments demurs or Honorable mentions before we close up. I think a lot of you had honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. I got an honorable mention. Honorable mention. If she associates with Black Lives Matter. Dumper. <laughs> <laughs> it goes without saying dumper. Yeah, she's probably she's probably not interested in men, but but rather fellow, fellow <laughs> uh uh ladies if she's interested in Black Lives Matter, but Definitely. Yeah, can I can I piggyback Tim kind of what you're saying made me think of one more too with 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 my last with my my last point that um the the consolation you can have uh men out there w women that are hearing it that are 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 maybe you know their ears are peaked to this stuff that we're talking about um if someone has a capacity for suffering and you're looking for it and you like it most people don't like suffering so they don't actually even value that in someone else so they're mm -hmm. going to see the person. If you see someone who has a capacity for suffering and you're at all, you've at all moved your instinct toward trying to find that you will immediately see them as almost infinite times more valuable than other women that you interact with. And what you can know with sure confidence is that the same man, the, the next man sitting right next to you will look at them and be like, nah, I don't really see much. Right. So it's not, it's not something where all of a sudden they'll dry up and you, you know what I mean? The pool will dry up and there'll be no one. 
because so few people are looking for that. But if you have that in your own compass and you're looking for it on a woman, it'll stand out. They'll even recognize that it stands out that you see them right. for that and vice versa. And um, you'll be you'll be playing uh, playing a game where you're on a field of your own. You know, there's so few people far and wide on that field that you'll comfortably be in a field of your own. So yeah, great. there's such a distinction too with with suffering gracefully and with femininity and suffering with bitterness and withdrawal because being able to take it on a on the chin as a woman is half of it. Being able to take it on the chin and still be affectionate with your husband afterward and still be kind to your children and not storm out of the room and not be cold and not withdraw. That's the magic. That's the femininity. And I think St. Paul talks about that. You know, Tim, you, you kind of just said it. You brought Stefan to the faith, but she taught you about suffering. That's literally what St. Paul says is that it's the, the femininity of the woman, her virtue, her grace that will turn change the heart of a non-believing man. That's, it, oh, it's it, true. It's, I never thought of that. I never yeah, thought and, of that. Well, and it's, and it's worth noting too, that man is, or is ordained to lead via suffering. That's Christ. I mean, that is, and, and the, 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 the underlying value, the principal value in masculinity is sacrifice. And the principal value in femininity is something like, um, you know, care or, uh, nurturing things like that, things that draw together. But so right. now you can actually even rightly understand how a man principally needs to lead by demonstrating what a capacity for suffer, suffering is like. And when you get the situation, like you're talking about with, with Tim and Steph, where the woman inspires the man to raise that to a higher level, this is what we've talked about. Once, once that man is pursuing it in those, in those you know, in the, in the dis, parts of the distribution where excellence is accounted for, third standard third, fourth standard deviation out there. Once a man gets triggered to it and inspired to it, he now will take this so much right. further. Mm. And that is uh, that is a, a holy and saintly thing. When that occurs, now you actually have a real pathood to sainthood, not the whole cliche, you know, everyone's called to be a saint. They are, but it's through suffering. It's true. So, that's true. Yeah. No one wants the suffering. Everyone's yeah, like, I want to be a saint. That's my, I mean, the, when you get into good Catholic circles, like I run in, uh, Roy, Royce, you're, you're a Catholic and you're, you're out in the trenches of Minnesota. So you'll, you'll all, sometimes talk like you're out of, out of the Catholic. No, but it's just, it's, you occupy a different space in the internet, even though you're a fellow Catholic, whereas with fellow Catholics, I know in my space, Everyone says, I want to be a saint. That's the purpose yeah. of life. That's not, it's mm. almost like it's true, but the truth can become a cliche when people say it without meaning it. And that's how it becomes in Catholic spaces. Whereas it's like, well, that's definitely true. Everyone's born to become a saint, not to be a great basketball player or, or a prize fighter or mm. painter or poet or prophet or whatever. Right. E even in the Catholic spaces, you're a prophet in order to get to heaven and to help others to get to heaven. And, but what AJ, you're, you're just, just pure, pure science. You're dropping the yeah, point. Well, you can't get there without suffering. Yeah, no. And, and I'll, for the, for the people that tune in that, you know, maybe scripture, scripture oriented people. I, this hit me like a rock when I realized that I was reading Hebrews and the first, you know, the first chapter of Hebrews talks about the comparison of Christ as being uh, above even the angels. So we have implicit in there a natural order in creation where the angels are above man because he's singling out Christ as being having become human and being higher than the angels. So the fact that he's noting that sort of oddity is telling you something about the nature, the order of, of nature. Okay, and then in chapter two, he gets to this very subtle point where he says something along the lines like, God, God deigned to become man because man was capable of dying. Because man was capable of suffering, it was more fitting for God to become a man than it was to become an angel. Okay? It's it's so profound because it tells you that suffering is not some inconvenience. It's not like the the Buddhist the Buddhist impulse which says life is suffering and and our peace is to transcend suffering. Resign it says, to the world. Yeah, yeah, it says no, right. it says suffering is the principal thing and it's why God became a man rather than an angel, because it was more fitting for God 
to take on suffering and show forth his glory through that. That's, so we, that's, we, it's deep. Also, yeah, so we, re we really have to understand how integral suffering is to our, to our growth, to our path, to what God desires for us. I also love that you're pointing out the, the mutual constitutivity, the, the corollary nature of suffering and desire. Whereas Buddhism and other, uh, what, what does Royce call it? Judeo-Buddhism is what's being sold as the deepest okay. thing out there to secularists. Well, if you're going to be spiritual but not religious, go be a Judeo-Buddhist like you see in the movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're, the, the, the fivefold way or whatever it is, eight noble truths, whatever, whatever the thing is called is don't desire anything. Stop desiring so that you'll stop suffering. This is doubly bad. And A.J. Barker has made that plain here today. It's good to have good desires. Aquinas says all desires properly ordered are good. It would be subhuman, amoral, perverse to not have to, to not desire the good. We're supposed mm -hmm. to desire the good. That's where we're given a rational will. So that's bad. Buddhism's wicked and evil on that end. But it's also bad because it's saying to, to avoid suffering. Yeah. And it, the Christian knows. Have it's catnip for modern for modern man modern woman yeah. Yeah. because that's why the west loves and embraces buddhism in its ac academic literature psychological literature all of it there is this this frictionless merging of the two because it it holds up the you know the carrot at the end of the stick that says maybe you could be without suffering and wouldn't that be a better world wouldn't that from a utilitarian ethic standpoint from any number a secular standpoint well, any number of ways you want to parse this out they think that that is the ideal and it's the exact thing that damns them that can that sends their their soul in on a, a distinct route toward perdition right yeah. and so it's, it's the lukewarm just, yeah 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 it's better to be what was what was the i think Potter Cole. Augustine Potter Cole. quote yeah but the augustine quote where he's like it's better to be um lost in your passions than to have no passions basically um tim i do have one parting shot rule my, my final that I traded. <clears throat> if the woman gets elective permanent changes to her body, oh. dumper. This is tattoos. This is gauges in the ears. Um, and I'm not talking about reversible stuff. Like she's got a little stud right here or whatever. Um, every tattoo is, uh, well, I won't, I won't. There's a guy on Twitter who says who says what every tattoo means, but um, <clears throat> tattoos. I would even go so far as to say, um, be very cautious of certain experimental injections if you care about having children and not dying of heart attacks. Um, even as the man, because now you will be receiving all of that as well. If uh, if she was significantly affected by that, but all of those irreversible body alterations are coming from places of your dad was terrible and therefore you have very poor judgment um you have no restraints and you have very poor judgment so you're 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 marking up your body you're getting these tattoos you're getting gauges in your ears um botox and stuff like that you know a lot of girls nowadays at least in my generation they're just getting just a little bit of lip filler just to make their lips just to like a little bit bigger or something like that. It's like, okay, that's, you can stop that. Um, it's obviously I not. That, I actually think that's way worse than a tattoo. Yeah. I I, I, really? I I'm kind of be a hard I'm no to me. me. Yeah. That would be a hard no. Really? Me. Why? Oh, why is, I mean, that fades. No. You have to get more. You have to get more. A tattoo is that's there forever. Right. But again, you could actually get rid of a tattoo. I mean, but, you it's, can actually. It's not to me. It's not about. It's not about. You can remove tattoos, though. I mean, you can remove them. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm tattooed. But, I'm, not, I'm not worried about about that. But I'm, I'm what I'm saying, yeah. and I actually, post conversion, understand that the tattoo was itself um, a, a transgression. So when people ask me, no, I will never get another tattoo. For me, it's the same. It's it would be the same principle for for a woman who gets a, a tattoo, right? Um, if their principle is like, I don't care that someone gets tattoos. I don't think tattoos are a thing one way or another. Now I'm in problem, problem territory. But if they can accept like, oh no, the marking up the body, like I have a mentality that's no, that's no tattoos. I think it was wrong when I got it. Frankly, I see it kind of as a mark of like 
here's here's my here's here's the center that I am. This is me. I think for potentially the, for the, I, I, God. the emphasis that I was putting on there was the capacity to make decisions. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, I, I follow it. I follow it. And I'm not I'm not in in revolt against it. I'm what I'm saying is that to me, if they go Botox, <laughs> even if it's a lip filler in their lip that they have to re up, it is so cosmetically oriented, so externally right, superficially right. oriented that to me it's of a way graver nature and they're more likely because it passes away to be like well it just passes away so what i'm like whoa and what it means about sex what they're signaling yeah. to the world oh. about sex i mean i i don't I, I don't want to do a whole anatomical thing and get way too explicit but the lips <laughs> what you're signaling about sex and that <laughs> it's look if someone's in an accident or they need facial reconstructive surgery that's sure. a little different even if that's more per i don't think permanence is necessarily the first metric and i'm we're not trying to undo your rule nick this is this is you this is just dialogue on it i'm not an anti-tattoo guy like steph doesn't have any i don't know if a a small ta i've seen small tattoos like on on the foot or something that i i didn't think were cringe for girls but i also don't think we have to be egalitarian girl guy things can be okay for a guy like a tattoo catholic answers which i don't always cite favorably has a great explication of why tattoos are not sinful that I found very, very compelling. Um, but I, I think it applies. It's much more a, a red flag with, with women who get tattoos than men, but I wouldn't say it is a hard rule. I, I think this is getting into, we're encroaching into preference here as, because this is the first, Interesting. <laughs> this is the first rule I, we did 15 and all of us were like, yeah, great here, here, here. We're all adding to it. The, the cosmetics one and what is needless, uh, gratuitous tinkering with the body. We're, we're all disagreeing here. Even I'm agreeing with AJ to disagree with you, but I don't even agree that tattoos are per se, <laughs> per se sinful. So I think this proves there is. Right. Uh, and and prudence. mine doesn't come from like a, a precept. What I, my thought on, on tattoos is, is the attempt I, I would say that the the attempt is to beautify the body. And so I think there's something, it, however you'd say it sort of, again, just using reason, it seems there seems to be able to be a, a sort of inversion going on. I think I think that's the real motive of tattooing is to beautify, to adorn the body in sort of greater beauty. And it's to mark one in a permanent way when one is a change in this life is changing. So to me, it just seems incongruent. I'm not you know, declaring that, that it has to, you know, that the, that the church has declared it a sin or this or that, or certainly obviously in the law of Moses, there's, there's harsh things against it, but can be buried in a Jewish cemetery. But again, tattoos. yeah, but again, it's like, but Darn. I, I'm not having to, I'm not having to refer to that as the basis of it. <laughs> to me, it's something more, more instinctive to me. Royce, my life goal was, was to die and to be buried in a Jewish cemetery. So you just ruined it. <laughs> me <laughs> it's over so me too it's over man. i'm gonna have me to get too. a new goal me too man yeah i'm done i'm i'm i'm, 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 I'm out so yeah yeah, yeah. It, it is what it is no i think the 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 tattoo thing is i get the spirit of it though yeah I mean, the, yep. the, the point yeah, is sure. is when you know when you have that uh when you have that that real impulse to to change oneself in a permanent way to appease the the you know the the views the aesthetic views of others of yourself there is something there is something imbalanced about that but you know again this these things come with the grain you know you gotta you gotta take them case by case right because you know there are some people who have a profound sense of beauty and you know art and you know we can't do away with the art right oh gosh we no. can't let the homosexuals uh hijack art and beauty. And I think that's right. kind of what's happened is like the left right. and progressives and this entire woke movement has hijacked everything th that was good. So some of us tend to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Art is one of them. I mean, you can't right. find an enclave of artistic people and not find a bunch of yuppie, you know, omnisexual global, you know, globalist style, egalitarian people, radical feminists, trans activists, you know, the whole litany of them. Uh, and in there, there's a few people who just like art, right? right? So those few people who just appreciate beauty and art, we got to save oh, some, man. some room for them and, and, and understand that, Hey, there are people out there that haven't been co-opted through, through art and beauty by, by woke, by the woke element of it. But 
as a general principle, you should be weary of people who, and there's a difference too. When when you, when he said when when he says the the gauges, yeah, I mean these are the nihilistic people who do parkour from hundred story buildings, yeah. right? But a guy who had you know I, I know a bunch of like ex military guys, for example, I mean stone cold killers will will go to war for the country and die for the country, and will go to war for their faith and die for their faith. And you know when you see that Semper Fi tattooed across a man's shoulder blades, you know you're dealing with a guy who you can go into a foxhole with. I like that. I like yeah. that. Now you see a woman who's got Semper Fi tatted on her shoulder blade. <laughs> I'm less confident in it. I'm less. I'm a little less confident. But I guarantee you, the culture we built, there are some women who are much better in a foxhole than a vast majority of men, which is scary in and of itself. But oh, a reality Royce, you had me up it. until I was going to say your answer is just per to the tattoo. Perfect. Right up until what you said there. I'd rather be in a foxhole with any dude. Than- <laughs> oh, wait, but Tim, but wait, the, here's the here's the great equalizer, though. That used to be true when when the when the uh, rules of engagement of war were based on physical ability and physical strength. And in this way, I'm as pro Second Amendment as anybody. But the invention of the gun itself was kind of a beta male cuck move <laughs> i'm not i'm not anti-gun i'm as pro second amendment as they come but the the impulse to advance in weaponry was always a sort of beta male cope right it's like i don't want to have to come against i don't want to have to come against the the the, the giant in the open the vandals and the yeah i don't want to have to come vikings. against them in open field and and have the full faith of God that I could strike this man down with a slingshot because I don't really believe in I don't you know I'm I'm too I'm not I'm not down like that with the, with the so but my point is you give me a woman with a nine millimeter loaded with hollow rounds and there's a lot of men who she's gonna be able to to neutralize and and uh, and and take out and that's just that's just where we're at with things so you get a woman who's been trained how to handle weapons. I mean, there's a lot of guys at the first gun fi- gunshot they hear go off, they pass out, they'll faint. It's because we're so we're so weak. I mean, we just that that's the real root of feminism that I'm worried about. Is that you know if we go to war and maybe I'm going off on a tangent here, but if we go to war like World War Three, we're letting transsexuals in the military. We're letting guys dress in drag in the military, let alone your average street by street man and what it you know what they've come to think of as being manly like can you start a fire if need be like you know if the electrical grid went down and there was no more heat could you start a fire or you know could you catch and hunt an animal could you even catch a fish uh, a shitty fish that wouldn't even taste good but like is there any remote sense of survivability and there are a lot of women out there who have who have been taught those base and it's a it's an indictment of men Really, that there are women that are somewhat, you know, gnarlier and tougher than 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 like, for example, I train MMA, right, Tim? Oh, if I nine nine out of ten guys I see on the on the street, you know, if I take the baddest female, I mean the baddest jujitsu female, she snaps some of these dudes' arms in half in a heartbeat. Now they may still be able to overwhelm her in the if the fight went on long enough. But she snapped their arms, no problem. I mean, this is how flimsy wrist men have become en masse. And I think that's the real danger to dance around that. You know, I'm not, oh, let's let men compete with women because there's women that can. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we're so kind of punk that some of these women are actually taking a a, a shot at, you know, or, you know, a shot in the moon here with it, you know. And so it's also why I don't. I don't love BJJ though. Uh, in the same way that gun, like all of us own and have guns, I, yeah. I'm amenable to your point about guns are in a kind of George Lucas Obi Wan Kenobi way, uncivilized. What civilizes if you're gonna if you have to fight someone on a field of battle, do it with a sword or you say a slingshot. That's that's more based. I I can get with that, even though I love guns and own lots. Yeah, me too. Same thing with BJJ. I I get that it works. And guns can be the great equalizer for for women to protect themselves. I have six daughters. I, I they should all they should all have license to conceal and carry. Of course they, they will. Should all they, know how to shoot a gun. They're like six and nine. <laughs> <laughs> the older they will, and I I do start take, them early. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I take them hunting with me. Steph but I also don't like your email. Hey, don't be saying that. No woman could stand toe to toe with a man in a boxing ring 
No. And it doesn't even even a limp little dude is still 1.75 times stronger than even a, a strong chick. So yeah. whatever you're saying about guns with regard to the the manual hand to hand combat weapons, it's true. It's true about BJJ with regard to boxing. No woman can stand toe to toe with a man and and throw punches. No matter no, how if a man if a man who's remotely strong. Now don't now don't get me wrong here. I mean there are always exceptions to the rule. I know when I see the Antifas of the world and these little scrawny uh, kind of, uh, I don't even know what you would call them. They're, they don't even mealy mouth. Yeah. They're not even really like people. I don't even know. They're, they're not. I mean, they're like, F grade maggots. F grade. Yeah, maggots. They're really weird looking. You know what I mean? Like, so there's some of those guys where I know a woman that would head kick them and knock them unconscious just because they wouldn't even know where to begin. But if you get a reasonably strong, healthy, you know, adult male who doesn't even have to be trained can just is you know reasonably aggressive uh, uh even a, a highly trained B, bjj woman will have trouble um dealing with that dealing with that fight as the fight brews on but um my, my point was originally about tattoos we got on the, down the road that's how I, my, my podcast always goes but um you know there there's some people there's some exceptions to the rule and time and place and history have to also account for how you uh how you judge some of these things in my opinion yeah so. exception makes bad law and people women women and that's the other thing aj and i have talked about this women love exception and trying to make law from exception so yeah. should women train with guns yeah should women train uh uh mma i say hell hell no because it's going <laughs> to give them a false sense of security a gun's a lot more of an equalizer than than bjj if you ask me but again this is prudential stuff that even five or six of the most staunch anti-feminist guys can disagree about and notice i i think this is funny it only happened in the honorable mentions everyone that brought right. their best right. we have 15 rules not one guy was like no no but we're all being honest we're all speaking our mind here are my honorable mentions i'll say this on behalf of our mutual friend scott nick no hoop, no big hoop earrings. He hates. Yes, them. he hates. I, I hate like all the earrings, but yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't. I, yeah, again, I'm not. I'm not the pure. This is very, very prudential here in the honorable mention section of the list. But <laughs> big hoop earrings run because um, take take the take the body count purported and multiply times ten. I think. Um, yeah. Same. Add same, a big zero. Same pace. Uh, fake eyelashes. Falsies. Big zero. The, that's that's trouble gluten-free on the date or if you're at mass <laughs> she gluten-free host run in unless it's some you know pressing medical need which she'll always characterize it as she's lying um uh number one now that nick this was really disease. relevant in this situation we were we were we were talking about earlier can't handle an off-color joke i don't mean a dirty joke because that that's that's a little bit outside the, the categories of the way we tend to talk. I'm talking an off color joke, you know, in, in inappropriate, irreverent to most of the classes of uh, conversational topics that, that we tend to spend our time doing. If a woman can't handle an off color joke, it doesn't mean she has to love it. Just she can't sit there in a room full of guys while she's serving them sandwiches or something. Now, Steph will be serving us sandwiches and joining in right in the off color joke but but a lot of women just that's fine if you just keep serving the sandwiches and don't make a fuss but there's a need to detract attention to divert it to herself if she says oh come on guys like that that's a run or no don't run dump her make her run uh from the relationship by dumping her um if she ever says this is my truth all of these are steps by the way. <laughs> oh man this is my truth is the worst yeah. your own personal <laughs> truth no, yeah. no, that should have been that could have been that could have been high up. That could have been like number three, actually. That could have been that could have been high because yeah, that's that also big in the dating scene. Speak your truth. What's your truth? Or yeah. if she asks you your truth, that's almost as bad. <laughs> Any other honorables? Because we, we got to get out of here. This has been a very good show. You guys are like the two honorary C-Mask members, Royce and AJ. We love it. We do. We do. Any Anything else? Anybody else want to pepper us? Splash the pot. Oh, we could probably keep going all day. Uh, yeah, don't don't that. offer that. If she has a Buddha, if she has a Buddha on her fireplace. <laughs> yeah. 
if she yeah. does, if she does more yoga, different. you guys, she does more yoga water. than prayer, yeah. right? Yeah, if she does. If she is Kundalini, <laughs> she's a Kundalinist. I, I didn't. I'd encourage young young men just to 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 hang in there. You don't. You know, don't prematurely jump ship on it. You got to wrestle with these things. Um, if if it, hey, first off, it's awesome if they come tailor made to fit all these things. That's great. Good good for you. But um, you know, married folks, I've been married a couple of years and you already start to forget what it's like to be single and sure. in solitude. And it's a Terrifying. hard that's a hard testing ground. That's a hard trial space. If you think it, yeah, this no is doubt. my thing, if you think you're the dude that's just dumping them and now you're good to go, I'm doing a <laughs> joke around you being like, uh, I know a squealer when I see yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, no, that's cap. You know, remember I mean? like, the the point, so, AJ, hang it, in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, hang yeah, yeah, the point yeah. is you dump to test what you let the little baby birdie fly free. If it comes back to you, you have something there. This I is hear you. I hear you. And I still think like if that girl has some sense to her, she could she could she could pry out your weakness. If you're too premature to dump, then you also got a problem with enduring suffering that if 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 she puts you on the spot. Now like you now you it. might get exposed. <laughs> you yeah. might because well, yeah. I'm just saying. Wait, saying wait, 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 wait. We don't want we don't want post assertive qualifications here though. Don't be pre don't be trigger happy with dumping, but this list is specifically built around dump if and 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 if she comes back for any of these, that th this is real. This is a real right. thing. No, like, no, and that's why I'm just I'm closing out again on the prudential side to the young man, which is like, you know. Just understand that if 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 you're gonna have to hang in that you're gonna have to work through stuff and understand yeah. from our perspective, this is what I'm saying. I'm a couple years into marriage. Tim, you're what 20 years into marriage, 15 years into marriage. 18. It's like yeah. you you are long separated from the solitude. I know because I'm separated from it by a short amount, and you already feel like whatever, you know, I'd be fine being solitary. And it's like, but when you're in when you're in it, and I'm that's not that far back for me, when you're in it. You're lying to yourself if you think the sort of desperation, the anguish of that solitude isn't going to act on you. It's going yeah. to act on you. And you right. need to come to terms with that. And now you need to try and get stronger through this. And part of it will be testing out the dumping. But part of it's also recognizing like, all right, dang, I'm not I'm not the the self-independent thing that I that my my yeah. deepest yearnings of pride desire me to be where emotionally I can just be cut off from all of it. So. Again, it's just dump a, or a, ultimatum you could say look yeah, stop yeah. Bring, the bring, thing bring the heat uh, that, that would probably be my my final you know santa bring the heat if these things happen you gotta push back on it but we also yeah. know that that your your heart for the most you know for 99 percent of people your vocation is to marriage and so so you're gonna have a yearning toward this and you need to can, can, to factor can, that into the can equation. we say can we say this in in in, in full maturity in a sort of Donald, I don't mean to make it political, but yeah, yeah. in a sort of Donald Trump kind of way, you go out there and you set the law out there in in a in a more concrete place, like these fifteen things, dump them, and we know man will fall short because God put ten commandments on tablets and they we couldn't follow those, so we definitely are probably not going to create a better set that man has had to have a, a a good time following hard line, but we're just setting a standard. That that you, and and part yeah, of it is a juxtaposition to what the radical feminized culture has set, right? And so part of it is is part of the list I think in saying dump if is a is a part of it can be a little prescription based on who you're talking about and in the situation. It's a lot of it's going to be based on you and what you can handle and what you can uphold like any moral or ethic. But part of it is just to juxtapose what they've created on the other side, right? And they have created a culture where no man should be able to say no. That's why you double down on the no in the first two rules. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're creating that juxtaposition as well. And men are going to fall short of it, uh, you know, because if they had the capacity to stand up and, and shake that off, uh, we wouldn't even need to make a list. Right. Yeah. But but at least as we'll normalize, <clears throat> normalize that this is where you should be aiming for. Right. I mean, you should be in this area. You should be in this yeah. realm. And then and uh, then, you know, even if you fail, try and get back to that area. Absolutely. Yeah. As the resident uh, single man here, the the list for me is in the truest sense of the word empowering. It's to know that like this is these are my fifteen commandments that I don't have to take a violation of them. It, I would be justified in 
uh, either bringing the heat or just dumping her and saying, this is the standard that you have to qualify for because this is just and good. And I'm worthy of that. And I think for the young guys out there, um, the there is a sincere desperation, AJ. They're absolutely it's yeah, yeah, freaking dark. Yeah. Yep. And so yep. having these having these rules there as a way of saying, like, I'm going to hold in tension my genuine and good and natural desire for a wife with not sacrificing things such that I marry a woman who's going to bring hell upon my head for the rest of my life, I think is really valuable. Right, right. And and um, that that's there in the wisdom literature and Proverbs that occur, you know, a bad wife is a curse on a man. So. So yeah, you do have to you do have to sincerely sort of watch out for those things. Um, I would say just one thing that red flags to me, Nick, is like, don't buy into our our self empowerment culture, which goes, I am worthy of something. You might not be worthy of it yet. A lot of you young men, like you might have to forge yourself in the fires of suffering. You might not be worthy of the person who can check off all those boxes quite yet. You have to be willing to sup to take things on, to confront things, to handle friction. Right. Absolutely. And, and so, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, take that perspective too, where it's like, yeah, this is the standard. This is where I'm getting to. This is what I'm striving for this level of dignity where I can hold to these terms. But if you fall short of it, don't go the other round and start repressing it and act as if like, you know, cause that's going to lead you down. Like, okay, I fell short of it. All right. May I call, but Lord, you know, help me. I need more fortitude. Right. I need more for, and then chip away. Yeah. Chip away. Totally. Yeah. yeah then I, you, I, then you become Paul, e, Paul Elam. If, if, uh, you know, with the blocked wish where you're like, okay, well, I'll just swear off all women. But I've, I thoroughly agree with you, AJ. I think you said yeah, yeah. that that better than I could when I was using the words empowering. And we see it a lot as matchmakers in Seamask, right? Guys will be like, oh, Tim, I read your book. I read even Steph's book. We shouldn't take crap from, from the ladies. And we're kind of like, yeah. And then we're like, okay, but what are you bringing to the table? And then the guys will be like, well, so, so I'm, I'm 43 you know, I want a, a 28 year old, you know, smoking hot chick that's ready to serve me sandwiches. And we're like, OK, what like what's your what's your chest to, to waist ratio? Uh, what, what What's your what's your one RM bench? What um, uh, hopefully you haven't looked at the prawn for at least two years. OK, if they're X, 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 their one RM bench is, you know, 125 pounds. And their their waist is bigger than their chest, and they're not at that seventy percent ratio. And they, uh, whatever, and they're they're addicted to the prawn. Then it's like, no, you're not worthy of it. So I, I'm glad I'm glad AJ said this to be worthy of a chick that checks all of these fifteen rules or passes muster. You got to be working on yourself too. This is another way work. we're different from red pill. It's like, you're not yeah. worth it just because you're a special snowflake. Women yeah. are being told they're special snowflakes and unique and beautiful and the most special snowflake in the whole world. Well, um, there is a most special snowflake in the whole world and she looks great and she acts great. Same thing with men, that special snowflake. If you're who you're, the red pill is telling young men they are without merit then you ought to look amazing. You ought to be amazing. You ought to be able to, you know, bench, uh, you know, three plates. You ought to be able to, you ought to be totally virtuous, have all of the natural virtues, be an inbuilt leader, not looked at prawn in a decade, all this stuff. So we got, we got lots of work to do here. We're not the red pill. That's what we're saying. That's what yeah, you got to have a high level of internal composure. For yes. That. And that's, that's only forged in, in trials and despair. So you know, good mm -hmm. luck in suffering gone down that road, then, then you, then you, you deserve it. And no one has to tell you, you deserve it because it emanates itself. Yeah. You know, we're, so we're that's, big believers. That's, that's my encouragement toward them is like, hold these up as a standard you're striving toward, right? Hold those yeah. 15 as a standard. You're, you're moving toward the thing that you're holding to measure yourself against. Right. Can we get to that place? And overall, the number one check for all 15 rules green light red light is does she smile a lot that, that's a, a really this is a big one that goes back to something i think nick you and steph were talking about last time you here does she smile a lot does she frown pretty frequently that's a very 
good indicator where where a woman's going to come out on all these roles because affability is one of the female virtues veer means man it's at the center of virtue most of these rules like prudence and justice are pretty male distinct you're only talking about a woman who, who's highly prudent or highly just in an equivocal sense uh thomas calls these the two rulers virtues and women can't be rulers so the female virtue is affability that means friendliness she should smile a lot and we are big believers in physiognomy. Uh, uh, you know, we we went through all fifteen rules now. Does she smile a lot? Does she frown a lot? This this is, I think, the takeaway for young men out there, young bucks like uh, young Stumphauser here, who is our resident single man. Nick, I'll let you close up if you want to. If you want to do a, the final final parting shot, since you're the single guy. Sure. Thank sure. you. Lord. The final, the final final parting shot is to uh, vehemently agree with that. And and relate it to what AJ said, because I think if you can gracefully bear suffering, you will have a smile on your face because Christians who have the joy of Christ in their heart, they can smile and they don't feel entitled to pleasure all the time. They can they can be pleased with their own existence. It's it's a great thing to be a woman. It's a great thing to be a woman. We love women. This is this is we, we love our women, you know. Um, so the I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, but the joy de ver verve, the French phrase of of just being so delighted with your own existence. Um I I I firmly agree that all truly feminine characteristics come through that. Um, which is funny because that's also the one thing that they seem to kind of go after first, which was how dare you say women should smile more. That was like the worst thing you could say is that women should smile. How dare you? So, yeah, I think women should smile more. Amen to that. God bless all of you guys. Thanks for taking part today. God bless you all. Parish Rovers of Retrogrades. Have a great weekend. God be with you.